we almost see no titties in movies anymore. And we only see dicks. Hey, you want to know something? I love titties. Big old titties. What's up, you big old bitches? We're back. We're back. And I've been planning on doing this for a long ass time with my boy Dick. I've been planning on it for a long time. And then some bullshit broke out, and I was like, wait, am I allowed to do this anymore? I'm confused. Hold on. <laughs> Oops. Man. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I just have like a blanket apology for everybody that knows me. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Eventually, I will split your friend group in half no matter what. Yeah. Sorry. Seems to be the first. <laughs> Oh, Max dude. didn't think it was funny either. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> do you recover? But, uh, did you figure? Did you separate the wheat from the chaff yet? I'm like a, a, a you remember the mutant apocalypse from yeah. the X Men? Yeah, that's like my mo. We gotta just, just cut every. <laughs> let's divide everybody into two and then see who the, the only the funniest survive. Only the ones with the only the ones who care the least survive. Yeah. Um. But dude, uh, welcome. I'm excited. Uh, I've been like I said, I've been playing this for a damn long ass time. Um, and then I got kicked off Twitter and that kind of put my plans in a damper for about two months. So it was kind of uh, weird. Um, but I got a book agent on Twitter. You, now. Like seeing Elon telling all the advertisers to go fuck themselves. Are you yeah. also kind of like, yeah, well, where's my account then, man? Dude, every single time Elon Musk tweets and he's like, free speech. I'm like, you son of a bitch. I'm like, I'm sitting yeah. over here on the on the gay kid like table, like at Thanksgiving, where all the gay kids sit. That's me over here. Yeah, I'm like, well, you know, gay kids at your Thanksgiving? Were you yeah, like yeah. a choir practice or something? It might have been just for me because I was okay. the only one at the table. <laughs> and you were fat too. So you had a whole table for all your food. Dude, I broke those chairs too. You know, it's like, I don't know if you remember, there's like these little blue and green, like tiny ass chairs. <laughs> and I would break those bitches like once a week, snap a leg right off. Uh, Vito broke my scale. Of course he did. Uh, so my, well, my cleaning lady, lady broke it, but I think it was all the, the stress fractures of Vito weighing himself like every month or uh, every week at my house. Yeah. I think it was his, it like gradually introduced a bunch of like, you know, microscopic micro stress fractures in the scale. And then the, the temperature changed and she touched it and it shattered. It's like, yeah. it's like windshield glass it was made out of. I don't know how it happened. It shattered. Well, it's because the weight's uh, slow, slightly increasing, right? Is that the, that's what happened with Vito? Uh, yeah, he's on a weight loss contest, so he's getting a little bit fatter every week, as it turns <laughs> out. Dude, this is what happens. I shit you not. Like, it's like a weird psychological thing when people that are like overweight or like grossly overweight in Vito's case um, start going to <laughs> they start going to the gym. They'll work out real hard for like a day and they'll diet for like a day or two or three. And they're like, man, I've been going real hard. I deserve yeah. to reward myself. And then they eat yeah. two fucking pizzas and like two, two liters and they completely negate all the work. And then they do that every two days. And then three weeks later, they're 20 pounds heavier. And I'm like, yeah, they, they reward themselves like every day. Uh, <laughs> what? So you used to be a fat. What is the deal with soda with you guys? Like, uh, you guys drink more calories in soda than I could ever drink in beer or I'd be dead. Like, yeah. what is it about just I, I've tried to drink a regular soda. I haven't drink regular soda in like, you know, 20 years. Um, just putting it to my mouth makes me like sick. It like turns my my mouth into like a sphincter. Uh, yeah, I can't drink it. it. Dude, I used to. Yeah, I used to. But I, if I drink it now, it like burns and I'm just like, I like, can't stop burping. And it's like this weird burp bubble is always right here. And uh, yeah. But, and I just took a sip. I took a sip of one like six yeah. years ago. And I was like, oh, my God. And now I realized why I liked it so much because like, I let it settle for a second. And I was like, damn. It was just like a straight up classic. Oh, you, got that, you got it right back in you. That oh, craving. It was, yeah, some guy brought a Coke to chase like whiskey with to my house. It yeah. was in my fridge for six months. I like pulled it out, cracked it, and I just sipped it. And I was like, holy shit. It like it burnt. I burped a little. But like that aftertaste, I was like, damn, that's beautiful. And then I threw it away. Didn't drink it again. Um, oh, good for you. That's the last one I drank one. But no, um, dude, I drank more calories. I drank more calories in soda per day when I was a teenager than teenager than Nick does in whiskey per day. I was going hard every day. It was unbelievable. I would drink probably 18 in a day. Oh my God. Yeah, uh, and I was almost 300 pounds at like 14. So I don't know how Nick can drink that much whiskey and not like slur as much <laughs> as I do. 
I have maybe I just have like a kind of a slurry voice, or maybe it's because I got thrown into that rock at Netflix. Um, but I'll see him put down like a three quarters of a bottle of booze and just be speaking normally. And this, he, he starts losing like uh, the train of his thought, but the the diction is still there. I'm like, man, yeah, I, you could get you could get out of any DUI, I believe, without even telling them you're a lawyer. He sounds a little. Maybe he speaks slightly slower, but he has perfect, like he uh, he enunciates really well. Dude, when I'm fucked up, and I, I don't know, you've never seen it, dude, if you were in Vegas at one time. <laughs> dude, <laughs> I was so fucked up. I like stumbled to a bed and then woke up an hour later and threw up all over the wall. Um, oh, nice. Can't even speak. <laughs> I can't even speak. I had, a girl with, yeah, I had a girl with me and I threw up and she's like, God, it smells so bad. And she just left. Didn't see her again. Uh, <laughs> 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 Where did you meet her? In Vegas? Yeah, dude. Oh, crazy. wow. That makes you one of a handful of men that have ever hooked up in Vegas with a woman they met there. That's amazing. No, I didn't hook up with her. I threw up and she left. You I threw up on her. I never even got to that stage. And at the time, I was so oh. messed up that I was like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I was like, just leave. Please, God. I'm dying, bro. I drank so much whiskey and I was gone. And coincidentally, I said I'm on a cutting diet right now. It yeah. was It was my first meal slash drinking like alcohol on like after i got off my cut so i drank a little bit and i ate a half a pizza and i died Man, so you say you're like cutting but every time you say it i think you're cutting for like a like a prize fight but you're just like oh. on a diet right is that like the yeah. masculine way of saying i'm on a diet yeah you know, yeah oh yeah. no, i'm I, cutting yeah. oh you're on a diet no 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 no, no. <laughs> cutting I'm cutting yeah. weight here. <laughs> yeah. No, I uh, Boxer, but I not. used to do it every year, and um, last year I, I only lost like 12 pounds because I went to Vegas and got drunk, and then it fucked everything up. I came home and I'm like, "Fuck it, we're going." And then I had to race like two weeks later, and there was no way I was dieting anymore. I was just traveling too much to freaking not eat Popeyes, bro, in yeah. the damn airport. Oh fuck, I'm like a black fat lady every time I see Popeyes. Give me all the biscuits. Oh god, I love it. Um, speaking of all the biscuits, let me hit this hey, giant. Wait, I don't, super I don't like that I'm so much smaller than you. You look like big Mario, and I'm like little baby Mario. I need to, I need to fix that. Go ahead, do your thing, but I need to make it <laughs> little time. baby Mario. Here it's we insane. go with the giant, go. giant Billy Hatcher boy right here. Look at this man! Oh my God! Billy Hatcher says, "I was hoping." Nick would be go. here. Um, it would have been the same size. Look, isn't that cool? Okay, yeah. sorry, sorry. Beautiful. It's so symmetrical and nice. Um, uh, and one dude has dick in his name. It'd be great. So he's gay already. And I don't know how much deep throat does dick do. How much deep throat does dick do? All of it. Uh, man, I don't know. I do. A, I drink a lot. So uh, <laughs> hopefully, ever clear, bro. I lose my uh, gag reflex when I get real drunk. Yeah, I suck so many cocks that I don't have a gag reflex anymore. So <laughs> I don't choke on dicks. Is that it? All works out. I think you did. You did he fuck up the joke? Like, how many would you choke on? Remember that one? <laughs> oh, Pamela, have on you dick. seen the clown that hides from gay people? No. <laughs> That's <a> shocker. <laughs> oh, Jesus! <laughs> you fucked me. I didn't even pick on pick up. It was so <laughs> casual. God. Damn. All right. No. Uh, Billy, right. I appreciate you for your hundred dollar super chat. You madman. That puts us a third of the way to Naked Snake for the 242nd show in a row. We haven't lost it yet. Thank you so much. You know what I thought as a when I was like a when I was a teenager, you know, and or, uh, 13 or whatever, you know, the age when you when you're all uh you got all those hormones, but you don't have a car, so you just stuck yeah. with a bunch of other guys, right? Yeah. And uh we'd always ask like how much money would it you would you take to suck a dick, right? And then now at this point in my life, I'm like, you know what? I wish someone would have offered. Yeah, I, I wish I would have got. Yeah, I, I wasn't. I wasn't like one of these ten million dollar guys. Like, ah, oh, you know, fifty grand probably. Yeah. A, oof, I could do a lot with that, right? But then, yeah, we saw so much quicksand when we were kids, and never one time have I seen quicksand. I feel like we missed that <laughs> no, it doesn't. It's like it doesn't exist. <laughs> no, I uh. I remember, I feel like I've always been pretty true blue about that question. Cause I had, you have friends that would always were, And even today, like adults, they're like no amount of money, no yeah, amount right. of money. I would never, never bro, like, I would do it for like, like $800 probably. Someone could pay me 10 grand to uh, mouth rape you, you right now. So that's the, that's the number. <laughs> all right. You start there and now you're negotiating against me. <laughs> yeah. Like that. 
Fuck it. I don't. Oh, somebody wait, asked me. Band, isn't it? I shouldn't say that on YouTube. Oh, now you're fine. Um, I guess that's what my band on Twitter. Um, but um, no, uh, somebody asked me uh, some hypothetical about Trump back when Trump was running the first time. And they were like, would you have sex with Trump like once? for like 10 million dollars and i was like i would have sex with trump every day for, for a year for, for free million. yeah <laughs> for free that's... for free <laughs> are you kidding me uh oh my god we met a girl who trump tried to fuck um i sat i sat down next to her i was like okay you got to tell me like you got to walk me through the whole thing like you be him, I'll be you, and you do his whole routine on me and she did it she showed me like the dance that he tried to woo her uh, he told her that uh, he would get her a jet. She's like, well, I have to get up for work tomorrow uh, or I have to get a plane tonight. And he's like, I got a jet. I'll fly you back tomorrow morning. And I was like, man, that's awesome. Like, that's that's exactly what I would have done. Like, we've all yeah. done it. Like, oh, no, I'll get you an Uber, baby. Don't worry. I'll get you an Uber. Uh, <laughs> and I'll get you an Uber. You could drink a little more. Don't worry. I'm like, it's just doing the billionaire version of that, like, lame shtick that we all do. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I would have done that just for the jet ride. That'd be cool. Yeah. yeah, I don't give. I don't mind. I'm not. I'm not. Okay, I'm not. I'm not a prude. Okay, I'll do whatever it takes to be successful. <laughs> yeah, you're not gonna be young forever, Campbellot. You know, no. you young guys are all obsessed with not being gay, but then you get to my age, you're like, who fucking cares, man? Yeah, I dude. I see a Look, penis every day. You saying Trump would be Trump could get it up for me? That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'd be impressed. But oh, you like yeah. this? You like? I this? must be funny. I must be hilarious then, because <laughs> I wouldn't fuck me. I'm like the opposite of Buffalo Bill. Yeah, you ever just look at yourself in the, the mirror. mirror every day and go, I wouldn't fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no shit. I'll take off my shirt, my my freaking drawers and shit, and look in the mirror, and I'm like, dude, I look atrocious. Why would anybody <laughs> want this? Yeah. <laughs> And I haven't eaten yet. Ah, it's getting worse. <laughs> yeah. Psycho Crusher says, Cam, well, I finally got Nick on stream. Is Nick also going to show up? Maybe eventually um, when he texts me. Thank you, Psycho Crusher. I love you. For the orange boy, the first one of the night, Slaglus says, Dick, I loved your Phil, Dr. Phil character. You may some, must have made a crap ton of money off that idea. Oh, wait, Fresh and Fred, Andrew Tate, and thousands of others have in your uh, stuck in the LA version of the studio apartment. I never was. Damn, oh. Slaglust. It's too long, Slagless. You should have cut it in the middle. It was funny. It was the oh wait, fresh and fit, Andrew Tate. That was funny. The thousands of others, like I don't know. That's a, Pearl. Pearl would have been. You need a third to make a joke. So it should have been fresh and fit, Andrew Tate and Pearl. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. It's uh, it's uh, it's rough. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, yeah, I, the difference is that I mean it. That's the that's what makes me <laughs> so upset is Andrew Tate secretly loves women and I really ha hate them and have always. Um, so it's like stolen valor what he's doing. So it's, <laughs> it's still, he's just pretending I, I paid attention to all that stuff. I mean, when when the manosphere uh, stuff started coming around when it was it was like two channels that were kind of known talking about it. And then within a month. Every single clip, every other channel, everything on TikTok, everything was a new Manosphere show. Isn't it crazy? And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, this is kind of getting a little gay. And then all of them started uh, randomly uh, being Islamic out of nowhere. <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck's happening? This is so strange. Uh, that's them getting paid by Dubai to pretend to be Islamic to get the numbers up. Yeah. Yeah, it was really strange. Very, very strange to see. And. I thought it was fun at first, but then I'm like, how many times can you like debate a not a, a, a straight up retarded 19 year old girl and it'd be fun to watch? Because like they're it's not yeah, they're fun just like ads for OnlyFans now, right? Yeah. It's like, well, it's not I know that she's getting something out of it. Like, I don't want to watch this. You're not humiliating her. She's like, this is a rope -a dope, man. Um were you around when were you around during like the initial like mystery, the pickup artist when that was big? In the in, Pick, you talking about the pickup artist that had a TV show? Yeah, do you remember yeah. that? Were you old yeah. enough to see that? Yeah. So it hit this crescendo, um, where guys would go to like hotel bars, like the Roosevelt on on Hollywood Boulevard. Like guys would go all over Sunset and have these classes on how to hit on women, and they would all just, you know, it would just be like salting the earth. Like they would just walk around randomly. These fucking slobs would walk around randomly and like. Uh, oh, your nose too big for your face. Oh, you look like a good girl. Um, and then when they when they poisoned that well, they would start practicing on each other. That was like the next 
step of their pickup artist game. So their 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 man, their mantra was just to go around in your life and then everyone you see, no matter what, if it's a man or a woman, hit on them. So they would be hitting on other men all the time. Like if you're walking around, a guy would come up to you and start negging you. And you're like, you guys have, you've got to stop doing this. You need, you all need to hibernate for like six months um, and come out like born again feminists or something. Cause this is, this is too much. This is done. Yeah. It gets, it, it gets overwhelming. And then out <clears throat> when you keep watching like more people add on to the bunch, I, you'll start getting recommended clips for, a new show you've never heard of, of some random guy that's like pretending to be based and stuff, but yeah. he's like really dumb and he's yeah. like trying to like repeat the same like talking points, but he's like real dumb. And it's like, this is, I can't even listen to this shit. Like <laughs> it's just awful. It got too awful. And, uh, I, uh, quickly stopped, uh, watching it. Cause I watched it for like two weeks. I think when the fresh yeah. fit stuff started really blowing up, I was like watching these clips for like two weeks and I was like, Oh, it's kind of funny. And uh, then it was every channel, every single channel was talking about it. Pearl, everybody. And I'm like, all right, okay. And then Pearl was advocating for, for vasectomies out of nowhere. And I'm like, what the fuck's happening? No. Yeah. Um, there was some guy today who I, I, I made some comment about one of those, that dumb little tiny house. Did you see that today? Yeah. It was like a. Oh, division. yeah. There's like this uh, Hispanic dude and he's trying to sell the like $1,000 a month for that tiny ass house. Yeah, yeah, they built it like like Anne Frank's house, but without the houses around it for some reason. Like yeah, straight up and down house. Uh, and I said, "Oh, at least your dick will look bigger in like this little house, right?" <laughs> yeah. And this guy comes in like, "Yeah, you know, no girl would ever fuck you in a tiny house like that." I'm like, "Buddy, what are you what are you even doing? Who are you? Who are you saying this to?" Yeah. First of all, women fuck dogs. They fuck, and their t houses are tiny, so the size of your house doesn't matter. Women do stupid and fuck stupid guys all the time, but why are you here telling no one this? Yeah. Um, whatever. So, yeah, he was like, would you live here for a $1,000? And I'm thinking to myself, no. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. I'll pay more and live somewhere that's not that. Why would I do that? I don't want to live with uh, what like around a bunch of other people who would pay a thousand dollars to live yeah. in houses either you know did you mow your two by two lawn no i didn't i'm sorry <laughs> like why would i turn on a mower for seven seconds not doing it not doing it yeah, that was weird but that is true that's a true statement your joke it's like well, it'll make a it'll make your dick look bigger man <laughs> i'll never yeah. forget i'll never as long as our house cool yeah I, I like hooked up with this like small girl really really small girl and I'm like, damn, my penis isn't that small as I'm looking down. And then I hooked up like a few years later. I hooked up with this girl. She's just got a giant ass. It's like two watermelons or cheeks. Just huge. And she backs up on me. And it looks like a, I look like I have, I'm putting my pinky like forward. And I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to feel this girl. I'm sorry. Uh, Rest no, in I, peace. I dated a real short girl. And she would jack me off. It was like a cabbage patch kid was jacking me <laughs> off. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Oh my God! Squid says, "All right, who's worse, Pearl or Chloe Roma? Both are fake as fuck and annoying. Only difference is Pearl leaves her house and probably doesn't sell naked pics on Patreon." Well, um, that's a plus for Pearl, right? Do you want to see Pearl's? No. Uh, yeah, she looks like Rocky Dennis. You remember that mask oh, movie from back mean. in the day? Yeah. <laughs> she looks kind of like that guy that had migraines. He had really bad migraines. She looks. It is kind of offensive, and I don't, I don't know why. I don't know if it's like biology or like I just can't help it. But when Pearl says something kind of based, I'm like, "But you look at how you look. <laughs> I can't take anything seriously." You're saying because you yeah. you look like Rocky Dennis. That is weird. She's yeah. built like one of those Weeble Wobble toys from back in the 2000s. I like I like Pearl. <laughs> um, I don't care what she looks like, but I don't I don't like women co opting like uh, misogyny. So yeah, like, like that's like, like that's like our thing. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you don't you don't have any idea what it's like. It's uh, it's maybe it's like what Indians feel like with like white girls are wearing a headdress at Burning Man or something. Yeah, like, you don't you don't have any idea what you're saying. You're making the words together, but you don't know. You really don't know what it's like. Uh, and oh, I don't want you to know. They think they do. It's like when those girls, uh, those girls go to uh, those white girls. It's like twenty-one year old white girl goes to North Africa to prove it's safe and gets beheaded immediately. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, I don't think you knew what you were doing. <laughs> it reminds me of that that small man 
that went to uh, the Sentinel Islands, and he was like, I'm going to spread Christianity, and they tried to kill him, and he barely escaped, and then he went back the next day, and they killed him. I'm like, what were you thinking? <laughs> um, uh, Lord Miles is going there. Do you know him? Lord, oh, I've crazy. heard of him. Hold on. Yeah, I've heard of this guy. Lord Miles. Lord Miles. Oh. He was. He called into my show a couple of weeks ago. He's. Uh, he was. Imp- well, he was detained by the Taliban for eight months. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember this guy. Yeah. That's crazy. Oh, he's definitely gonna die. Yeah. I mean, he said, he, was, he said he's going there, and uh, he you know he wants to bring like the most annoying thing possible, or the mo- what's the most inappropriate thing he could take to to Sentinel Island. He uh, asked, but he didn't come up with something. A three foot black dildo. And just start hitting him with it. He's gonna die immediately, so it's whatever. Just bring whatever. Bring old Volkswagen. No. Start doing donuts, like one of those old, like nineteen seventy seventy two must uh, Volkswagen, like Beatles, and just start doing donuts on the island. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, and they don't just kill you either. It's like really uh, fucked up. <laughs> they like will kill you, kind of. Maybe they'll like like uh, injure you beyond repair, and then they'll just like fuck with you. They'll just like drag you around and like flop you around and really dance, dance with you and like. Cut your your stomach out and start dancing in your like entrails and shit. They're crazy, uh, like a yeah. killer whale with a seal. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Wow. They just play with it. They just, they don't even. I don't think they eat you. They just play with your ass. You know, uh. they were open to it. Uh, like this in the sixties, I think, or seventies. Um, I, if I'm if I recall correctly, and uh, a scientist went there, gave them food, and like would try to give them technology, and they welcomed him in, and he went and stayed there with them, and conversed mm-hmm. with them, and like learned stuff about their <clears throat> their culture. And then the, he brought a few back to like London, and then like half the island or something died of some kind of disease that they weren't used to. Uh, so ever since then, it's like the white people are one hundred percent devil because they're going to come here and all of us are going to die as a result. Oh uh, yeah, so that's what Lord Miles should bring there, like COVID or something. <laughs> It'd be over. Just wipe them out, fuck them. You know, <laughs> they don't need to be here. I'm tired of flying over the island when I'm on a on a plane, and they're all yeah. looking at me like this. I'm like, no. <laughs> Mine now. Fuck it. This is Lord Miles <laughs> Island. <laughs> Just oh, I got something he can bring. An AR-15. There you go. Yeah. He, where, uh, that's the thing you should bring. <laughs> Just who's Chloe case. Roma. Chloe, I don't know, but he's he implied that she's kind of hot. Let's see. Chloe Roma. Uh, oh, not really. She's like in pink hair. She's got a neck tattoo of a squid or something. She looks kind of like she, well, the personification of Miles of Cock. But oh, she's know. like an a men's rights thing. Oh my, okay. She's nice lips, but well, that's a lot of tattoos. I feel like you could swing from her labias, though. Probably <laughs> they're gonna be dangling. She's got a big Montana down there. You're saying? Oh yeah, that shit's been hit with meat tenderizers and everything in between. Mm. Ugh. <laughs> um. She just looks like she might smell. I don't know. You ever get that impression? You look at a woman, you're like, hey, she probably smells weird. Yeah, I yeah. do. Because of the pussy, you're saying. Yeah, exactly, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something wrong with the, the pH balance is a little off. Smells infected. I don't know. I don't know about that. What's this weird pus? Fl- I don't, yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> I can't. I, I want to say that I like that they're trying, the MRA girls, but I don't trust them. Like, you know, keep yeah. your... Keep your enemies close, but keep your women way the fuck over there. That's my motto. I uh, like women that are not in depth enough, like intellectually, to even get to that point. Yeah. 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 I want them to be like, look at these curtains. These look nice. And you're like, cool. Yeah. They're not like, look at this misogynic, misogynistic grill I saw on Instagram. Let's talk yeah. about it. No. I don't want that. Pick out some dresses. I'll look at them. <laughs> I'll tell you Text what to me. Text me the dresses and yes. I'll say those were great. Yeah, exactly. Oh my gosh. Grifty says, Hey Cody, do you trace a 3D render clip ah. art to make thumbnails? I heard it's industry standard. I was hearing something about this today. What does this mean? Uh, we discovered that like ISOM is all just uh three like free 3D assets that were rendered into a comic book, and that that's why they look really weird and like lifeless. So no uh, one like did the art for it, or is it just no? Like, apparently, no. apparently you don't have to draw to make a comic book, which was which I thought was a prerequisite. But I guess six million dollars, I would have thought you could actually hire an artist to draw you a comic book. But instead, Eric just hired like a uh, a, a, a chop shop to three D render him a comic book. 
So some of like there's a castle in the book that looks like a bunch of beer steins glued together, and we couldn't figure out why. But then I guess it's because it's all just a 3D rendering, which seems kind of cheap and shoddy to me. But interesting. You know, what do I know? Yeah, I don't know nothing about fucking art because I'm, you know, I, I I started writing uh like the beginnings of a weird ass book because I'm, you know, I've always wanted to, but I can barely read. So it's gonna be very interesting. I got an editor though, so <laughs> it might work out. Um, but I got an artist for it. I thought that's what you're supposed to do. Uh, me too. Yeah, but I guess not. So I guess because it's all like free assets, I guess anybody could make ISOM, right? Like Eric doesn't own the trademark to ISOM. <laughs> and the assets are all free, so anybody could just make it. Like uh, the Washington Redskins. I think it's up for grabs. What was your question about? Oh, God. It's 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 going to be like a future... Uh, Well, here's like a one-sentence thing that it's kind of describes it. It's like okay. if there was... If the world was post-apocalyptic, Earth wasn't inhabited anymore, and it's about like the a future like Amazon picker guy. You know those people that work at warehouses that pick yeah. certain things like based yeah. on shipping, you know whatever um, invoices. Uh, it was like a, one of those guys, but in the future and in space, and he's like, do it. But it's way more dangerous. It's not just going to eat in a box. It's going to get another ship. It's kind of like that, and there's all kinds of weird. You gotta stuff. hunt for like fulfillment items through yeah. through space because the fulfillment warehouse is so big and it's <laughs> become feral. That's pretty funny. <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be stupid. I'm excited. Um, and I, I I I don't give names for anybody. I just call them random shit, and um, it's gonna be real dumb. I'm kind of excited. Yeah. It, is um, that your comic book? You should do a comic book like called Muscle Milk, where it's a guy with huge pecs that shoots r- deathly jets of milk out of his tits at his enemies <laughs> like that yeah and it's like those things go, that, wow how do you stay so trim are you on a diet and you go no i'm cutting <laughs> <laughs> it's like a water jet cnc machine just yeah. cutting people yeah. in half you can carve it out on the wall <laughs> mm muscle milk was here <laughs> <laughs> that's his power yeah um i don't know i got kind of tired of uh the superhero genre. I've been tired of it for like 10 years now, but I was like, I don't really, I don't just write something about a random ass regular dude. That's just fucking space. Like just going through some bullshit and he's, you know, really tired and kind of done with everybody's shit. And he's just, just yeah. going through the motions. That's kind of the whole character. He's just like, whatever. Fuck it. Does he have a, is there a bad guy? Oh yeah. I've, I'm, I have a, like a four. I, I'm thinking very future for it. It's probably not going to do shit, but <laughs> um, I've got like a four tier bad guy. I've got like this local, like oh. local, like flimsy politician that rose to power. And then after that, it's going to be like a higher level of like this shadow organization. And then another, like a higher level of that shadow organization. It's going to just kind of keep running up. And then every issue would kind of, or issues, couple of issues would kind yeah. of, that would be the antagonist that's kind of fucking with shit. And then at the very end, it'd just be like this big fucking like fifth dimensional shit. I have a lot of ideas, but I'm like, you know, stuck in trailer park, like reading comprehension. So I'm like trying to get it out. Is any of it like a metaphor for Israel at all? It should be. Okay. <laughs> so I maybe, to sell some saying there's a chance. Okay. I'm definitely going to say, say one way or the other. Just, <laughs> you know, it's how it's up for interpretation. No, it's and the, the campaign is definitely going to say, uh, if you don't want woke comics, then this is for you. And it's not even going to have anything to do with anything like that. <laughs> I'm just, yeah, I'm just trying to get some books that out. Yeah. <laughs> no wokeness in this at all. I'm going to specifically put like wokeness in it. <laughs> I hate, I, just, I hate wokeness and then just make it full of like lesbians, like big yeah. fat lesbians. They like, I hate like, yeah, it's making fun of them though. Yeah, every single man is just dumb, and they're just like, you don't know nothing because you're a man. <laughs> Damn you, Camelot. No, it's a joke. See? They're fat. <laughs> yeah. That's the whole joke. They're just overweight. It's fine. <laughs> oh, my boy Rankin Knott's here. My buddy says, I used to do picking an Amazon. Hated that shit so much. Oh, I can't even imagine. Dude, I would rather die. This I would rather horrible. die. My favorite thing about Amazon picking is like higher management and executives for those warehouses and leadership, you know, Amazon, of course, jumps on the bandwagon of all that, like hashtag equal rights, hashtag LGBT. They'll do all that on their, their PR and their, their social media, but they actually yeah. have policies in place via management at warehouses. I've seen documents for this shit. I've made videos about it back in the day and they specifically target black men and 
uh, people with neck tattoos, if they have any shrink, like any theft in any area of the warehouse, they just usually what they do, if they can't iron out who it is, they just fire the black people. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag BLM on Twitter, though. It's fine. Uh, what is it? Uh, words speak they didn't kill them. You know, they could have engineered like a robot accident and they didn't do that. So, yeah, it all worked out, baby. They got a. Uh, I'm when, got... when their drivers were shitting in bags because they oh, couldn't. Oh, yeah. Right? You remember that? Yeah. They I don't were know like... why there was a rash of bag shittings that came out and then it disappeared all of a sudden, but I don't see a bunch of new toilets around. Yeah. There was the shit in bags. There was the pissing in bottles, which apparently still goes on today. Um, people still send me pictures all the time. They're like, Hey, I work at Amazon. Here's some like five piss bottles I found. And I'm like, God damn it. Um, and then there was the trucks. The trucks don't have AC in them. And I'm oh. thinking to myself, why? <laughs> they look brand new. Yeah. That's just spiteful. Yeah. We got our new fleet. Oh yeah. You want AC? Obviously. Nah, nah, no AC. We'll don't save like, you know, <laughs> fuck them. Fuck them. Wow. <laughs> Be fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Yeah. And like um, collectively, all of us in America just don't even care. And we still shop there for everything. Yeah. It's no. so, so horrible. I, okay. So I usually shop at Costco, which is another probably, you know, highly evil corporation. But I, my friends will be like, yeah, I'll have a friend. He'll be like, yeah, I'm going to Walmart and he, like every day. And he's like, yeah, I got to go to Walmart and pick up some shit. I'm like, please stop going to Walmart, man. You're feeding the beast. You're feeding the beast. All those people walking in there with their sweats with holes in them. I see like, Ash cheeks smells like infected every time. Why is the 400 pound lady smell like infected? Who's dumping loads in that bitch? But they do, oh, and they're just they got dude. that all hanging out. I'm like, dude, I can't go there. And you might get slapped around or your ass kicked. I want to go there. Yeah. They do, and they're they're mobile. Like that's you can imagine a, a big fat cantankerous blob like that infected. You know, yeah. And she can't move, and you think, okay, the guy fucking her's got to be similar. But if that were true, he couldn't get he couldn't get up and get her. Yeah. Right? Like he's got to be probably rail thin it's always it's always a 118 pound black man every oh, time it's a tiny little black man <laughs> he loves that big old bitch god my favorite thing though is when you see her in the hall in one of the the aisles and her little scooter died and i'm like oh what you gonna do now bitch <laughs> oh really <laughs> yeah <laughs> my scooter died help but yeah you fucked <laughs> you you just live here now ma'am Sorry. Can we take those things over yet? Is there like a can somebody put a Bluetooth on those scooters so we can like hack them and then like <laughs> fucking you know get on the CCTV in the store and then play Mario Kart with a bunch of fat bitches? That was <laughs> how have they not made like a prank video of that? They just take all the fat people in the store and you go into the the AD lounge or AP lounge and then you just have a, people are just driving around. You could you imagine them screaming? Hey! Yeah. Hey, oh yeah, they fall off and roll off and get ran over by it. <laughs> That's how I put myself to sleep. I just imagine a bunch of fat women screaming. Ah! Um, God, the celery tastes so gross. <laughs> hey, did you see the? Did you see the pin that I put out? Hold on, I'm giving this. I give this away to my my followers on Patreon. Let me send it to you. You'll like it. Post it in the chat. It's like a you know a lapel pin, but I gave everybody. Who's uh, on my Patreon one for, for Christmas? Uh, there, look at that. <laughs> How th this is exactly what we're talking about. This is, <laughs> this is, it's so weird. How it's, like, it's there. Look at it. <laughs> it. They're literally falling off the thing. Yeah, I like how they have blue hair. It's beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> they always have blue. Cool. They have to have something they can customize. You know, it's all they got. Well, you know, it's I like when a guy like looks up to me. He's got to look like right here to get a sense of my personality. Right here. <laughs> Not so, my nail, the tips of my fingers, my nails I pick, color of my hair. Not so much here or here. That won't give him a good sense of who I am, really. Right here. I talk about this a lot, and of people don't really usually know, but do you know what like have you, you know what fat smell is? Uh yeah, I, that, I think so. That sweet rot smell. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I worked with a guy at GameStop that was like five, 500 pounds for a couple of years before I went on to a different store. And he always smelled like like cheap cologne and like sweet rot, like in between fat roll, like moist or something. Yeah. yeah. Oh, God, something about it just makes my skin crawl, man. Mm. It's like a, it's like a inside of a hat that you've worn for too long, but <laughs> more like wet. Yeah. Oh God! Mm. Did you know seventy-one percent of uh, women in the U.S. are overweight or obese? 
That's low. That's no. <laughs> Well, it's uh, I think I think black women's in the ninety percentiles now. See, but they always put those stats out, but it goes up every day a little yeah. bit. Like we need a we need a counter that just climbs every day, like <laughs> like the COVID death. counter on CNN back in the day. There's just eighteen billion deaths, and it's just like ticking, just ticking. Yeah. Be like average weight of females, and it just keeps going up. Cheesecake. Dude, cheesecake. That sucks. That really sucks. Uh, uh, that really sucks. Guys are. Old guys are not sympathetic enough to young guys because that stat should be that, sh that should be horrifying. Yeah, um, that reduces your dating pool down to thirty percent, and then if you remove all the women with shitty personalities, that removes it to zero percent. Yeah, right. Yeah. And if if you take like so, people always ask, "What am I on a scale of one to 10? And I'm like, "If you're if you're oh, if you're fat, if you're a fat woman, you're a zero. You're not even on the scale yet." Yeah, you know, yeah. no pun intended. So like. If that's the case, then oh God, it's because I somebody told me this one girl was a six because she had giant tits. I'm like, she has giant tits because she's obese. I would have a giant tits if I was obese. It would make me more attractive. It would make me less attractive. So I'm like, she's a zero. She's not on scale yet. You got to be at least thin before I can judge anything else. Yeah. Um, you know what else? I speaking of fat st uh, statistics, I learned that the BMI scale was created when people were getting a lot more exercise. So actually, it should be uh, lower than it is. For obesity should be a lower number than it is when it was created. How about that? Yeah. So we got well, a couple of women who don't even know they're obese out there. Well, there, uh, there, there was talks a year ago when I saw that the average weight for a woman was like 165, I think. 165 yeah. or 170, which is already obese for 95% of women. And... Yeah. um. I'm thinking to myself, there was a conversation where, well, if if the average woman weighs 175 or 165 or whatever, then we need to change what is considered overweight for women. And I'm like, no, it's there. No, it's just they're all it's overweight now. Like you can't just well, let's just raise the numbers. So technically, I like imagine being like fat and then somebody puts out a news article and it's like science considers these people not overweight. And you had you didn't have to do shit. You're like Vito. You're like, fuck, you still killing your pizza. And you're like, oh, yeah. suddenly I'm not overweight anymore. It all worked out. <laughs> yeah let's make uh let's release an article that says actually one inch is a huge penis that's <laughs> every single cool. japanese man you just hear everything erupting across like all of east asia just whoosh, like cheers yeah i know that's a south park joke but whatever fuck you <laughs> i'll Fine. never forget the first time i watched like Japanese porn, and the guy was just vibrating. He wasn't even like pumping. I'm like, what's happening? Oh yeah, yeah. What? Oh, that is so fucking weird. Yeah, because he can't pull anything out. There's nothing there. It's just he's just like vibrating, and she, and of course the girl's just screaming, like bloody murder. And I'm like, this is I can't even I can't even masturbate to this. I can't believe you tell me Tanaka's retired. I think about that probably every day. Who it sucks? Hitomi Tanaka. What do you mean who? Hitomi, well, hold on. Hitomi Tanaka, the most beautiful woman in history. Hitomi you Tanaka. Know. Oh, yeah, I know this lady. What kind of masturbator are you? You don't know this lady. <laughs> what kind of level of masturbator are you? Are you fucking jerking off to Camelot? Where have I seen this lady before? <laughs> in your dreams, probably. Why is her tits so huge? <laughs> They're like comically huge. Yeah. Oh, Hitomi Tanaki. She's uh, retired forever. Hopefully she doesn't spend her um, retired time talking about how evil porn is like that one chick did. No, she doesn't speak English. So that's uh, I mean, it's, that's the that's as, almost as hot as the huge tits. Yeah, that's perfect. Ain't got nothing. Just I, all I need is yes and no. <laughs> Can you make me a sandwich? Yes. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, what the fuck? Is that? It's fucking women. Yeah. Who's the big one that did that? Was it Mia Khalifa that came out and said, yeah. like, I, I fucking hate porn. Uh, uh, her man, when her man, okay, so I was two months into my shows when I started doing this show and somebody on, uh, uh, the guy that I had handling my, like, uh, handling all the guests, uh, back, back before he just stopped doing it. And I was like, well, fuck, I guess I'll do it. <laughs> he got the management for that lady yeah. on and interested yeah. in doing a show with me. And I'm like, bro, I'm about to drill this bitch with this porn thing. And then they canceled, of course. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Uh, I was so excited, man. I was so excited. I'm gonna be like, so what's up, bitch? So you get to gatekeep? You get to pull up the ladder after you done swallowed nine thousand dicks? This ain't fair, okay? Your at your your farts will never make a noise again, and I'm supposed to listen to you? <laughs> <laughs> no, 
I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah, who the hell? Who's that message for? Like a bunch of they have just infinite simps, right? So yeah. they've got hundreds of thousands of guys who are like, oh yeah, just like hate fucking her with their eyes or, while they're agreeing with her. I would hate no, I would hate fuck her for sure. It's like Brie Larson. Like I, I would just cover her toes up with like bags and then I would hate fuck her. For you sure. hate her? No, I would just hate no. fuck her. I don't really care. I'm like indifferent, but like I would hate fuck her for fun. Yeah, I think I was like I was annoyed with her and all her like uh hate men stuff. But then I, I went to the Marvels. I saw the Marvels, she's hot in the Marvels. Yeah. And then I the, the guys who shit on her just get so much more annoying than the well, like women have hated men forever, but now like men hating comic book movies, this like gay performative. Oh, I I'm, I can't wait to go see this movie so I can hate it. Like that's pretty new. Um, so I kind of yeah. got to respect. I kind of respect her more after seeing that. I started respecting her when somebody asked her a question about Johnny Depp being at an award show, and she was like the chairperson of the Me Too movement back in the day, and she told basically told him to fuck off. She's like, uh, I don't care i'm not interested if he if that's great if johnny depp's here if he has a movie i'll see it maybe and then like i was like ah cool she didn't like just say some bullshit she just said whatever um but i also don't understand hate watching like when i like there for example there's like clip channels there's other things out there where people will put up clips about what what have you i don't know but let's just say dsp or boogie or something and their entire channel is just hundreds of clips of boogie or hundreds of clips of dsp and i'm like if I don't like somebody, I just don't watch them. I don't, or if I just dislike their content, I just don't watch their content. And I, like people will watch that shit for like 20 hours a day dissecting it. And I'm like, this, you have a lot of passion around this really dumb subject, you know? Yeah. It's like in Mean Girls when Lindsay Lohan like becomes one of the bitchy girls. She's like, yeah, I hate him so much. I'm gonna like, well, are you sure you hate Boogie? You seem kind of like a fan. I don't know. That's what so I was talking I was talking to Nick about this the other day because there's clip channels that always go after him. They kind of went light on me. They a few of the ones that went after me like de got deleted or something for breaking. They're afraid of the muscle milk man coming in and slicing their heads off with his lactating yeah. packs. They were scared. <laughs> they never say it in public. No, that's for sure. No, but um, yeah, they can't they can't say that, but no. that's what they're afraid of. <laughs> but Nick, uh these clip channels are going after him and I was talking to him about this. I'm like, I'll, I'll go to a random clip from the clip channel and I will see the same motherfucker that's commented on like 2,000 of these videos. And they're like, God, I can't believe people watch Nick anymore. And I'm like, you, you watch like four hours of him and not from these clip channels. You seem like a giant fan to me. I don't know. You know, it's weird. It's, it is weird. It's like, I can't believe it. It's like, dude, you're doing it right now. I'm so confused. It doesn't make any sense to me. If you don't watch, you don't watch it. Like, whatever. <laughs> I can't believe anyone would watch that shit. Where's more so I can go watch it? <laughs> it's silly. I, I I do I do think it's funny. These those people um uh, yeah. they they make the uh the drama content go around. Um, yeah. speaking of drama content, let me read these reckon knots. Uh, my boy says they hire college graduates to manager positions that have never worked in a warehouse ever, and they mess everything up. That's very believable. Um. Thank you, Rakin. Says, I worked there in Arizona. That warehouse was hot as shit. And I worked night shift. Dude, I've heard horror stories. Um, like Lowe's after hours um, during the summer or uh, back in the warehouse of Lowe's, they will just not turn the AC on to try to meet their their like power budgets. They're oh, controllables on their p &L. And like 85-year-old yeah. and 75-year-old like people will just pass out from heat stroke or heat exhaustion. And I'm like, yeah. why don't you guys turn the air on? I went to Home Depot. In the middle of the summer last year, and it was cool as a breeze in there. You go to Lowe's, you're like sweating. You're like, oh, fuck, Lowe's. Jesus, what are you guys doing to me? Um, but yeah, the Home Depot seems to, they're totally fine with it. It's weird. And they just, in, they just endorsed, well, no, the founder of Home Depot endorsed Trump like today or something randomly. Oh, nice. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I thought you were going to say Palestine. And I was going to go, whoa, <laughs> whoa, I got to go shop at Home Depot right now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Rakin. Uh, let's uh, Slagalus has a new joke for you. Um, right. Joke slash flame. Thank you, Slagalus, for the Goomba. Says Dick. Dick, real shame about New Project Two. How it was found to be a scam and classified as one, then shut down. Shame how due to shoddy programming, the user info was leaked. Shame how Nick got swatted not too soon after that too. Nick yeah. Mercado got swatted. Um. Yeah, I think we all got swatted around the same time. Uh, I don't even know what uh, any of this means. Uh. No, I had a. 
I had a Patreon clone called New Project Two. Um, it was after it was right right when Patreon started banning people. Um, and I wanted to see what it was really like on the inside, like what banks would say, how you get banned, like who exactly is uh, exerting pressure on whom. Right. So I went to the bank, bank I've known for, you know, 20 years, got a merchant account and then started doing recurring processing payments. I set it, I set it up in like a month because um, I don't think Patreon should be making that much money and they, uh, they just don't care about you. Um, God bless them. Uh, <laughs> and like right away, I started getting my account started getting closed. My bank account started getting closed for these preposterous things like money laundering for transactions of like fifty dollars. Uh, I started getting hit with like I would ask them very clearly like what 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 am I allowed to do with this? Am I allowed to? Can I like go? Uh, is like at the hate speech a thing for a bank? Can I process payments based on that? And they're like, oh well, no, not hate speech. I'm like are you like really like what do you what's hate speech? And they're like, well, you know, just uh, you know anything like uh, you know saying the n word and stuff. <laughs> Are you guys, are you aware that you're in Hollywood right now? Do you know how many N-words are being, like, sold for billions of dollars around us? What do you, like, what is hate speech to you? This is in, like, 2018, so yeah. it was kind of a different landscape. I, I feel like everybody has uh, grown up together, and it's it's, yeah. it's a lot more obvious who's who's um, exerting pressure. Uh, but eventually, every every credit card company canceled, or every bank canceled my merchant accounts, and this is over about a year and a half, and then... Uh, uh, MasterCard put me on their their match list, which is you can no longer do credit cards on Earth um, ever. So that was the end of it. That guy, I think they're they're yeah they're inventing this thing like it was a, a hack or something like that. But it was uh, MasterCard just terminated the my ability to process credit cards. That makes um, sense. We made a new, we made a new one on the blockchain called Backed By, which everybody should check out. Backed dot by. It's on the blockchain, so you cannot be terminated or suspended for any reason ever. Um, Interesting. We're, uh, yeah, we're putting some recurring stuff on that next year, but I'll talk about that more next year. So, um, Slagless says, um, <clears throat> "Shame how Nick got swatted." Is 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 that like implying that Nick had like had something to do with anything? Yeah, I don't, I don't know what any of that is. Okay, yeah. cool. Well, thank you, Slack Lust. I appreciate you. Uh, you need you, you forgot to say for the Goomba in there somewhere to make me feel like you know less bad about myself, but I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, <laughs> old Slack Lust. He's been around for a long time. Uh, Matthew says, I think we should increase the standard sterilizer to be about 25% higher and not let the fats know. Then yes. they can either lose weight from extra energy exerted or fall to their death. <laughs> either way, win-win. So we reviewed this fat camp on my show, but it wasn't a fat camp for losing weight. It was a fat camp for like celebrating being fat. Yeah. And we're just going through like making fun of all their statements about positivity and shit. But then in their FAQ section, they had a they had a uh, a detailed breakdown of every slope and stairs at the fat camp so you could plan accordingly like so you could the slope of the ramp so you could see what kind of rascal you'd need or if you would make it and the uh height the rise of the stairs like they go from an average of five inches a step to eight inches a step over here it was so funny that's insane imagine being like well i can't i can't possibly do nine steps but i could do eight yeah <laughs> it was yeah. like that <sighs> interesting interesting yeah um that's weird. I, I I don't think body positivity generally. I know there's. I mean, if you have an element that you can't like control, maybe your leg got bit off in the war or something. Like that's different. But like encouraging people to just not care or not have accountability for themselves uh, doesn't feel like positivity to me. I think I think fat shaming or bullying in general is should it is more uh, powerful. I have a friend that uh went on a diet with me. Um, he's dieting with me right now. And every time he starts getting weak, I fat shame the fuck out of him. And he gets real oh, mad about it, but then he doesn't, he just continues to do what he's supposed to do. So I'm like, this is what How I do need to do. Mad? Like, what do you do? <laughs> he just, he just get real short of me. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll just be like, I'll be like, Hey man, like, let's do this. And he's like, nah. And then he won't respond. He'll just let me unread. And he's very talkative and he always has his phone. So I'm like, Oh fuck. 
Like I pissed him off this time. I just light him up for like an hour. He like, I don't know if I can go to the gym today. I'm like, you get your round motherfucking ass up and meet me at the gym right now. I swear to God, if you're eating yeast rolls, I will fucking kill you. I'll come over there and rip them out of your goddamn mouth. <laughs> like, and he's like, Jesus, bro. And then he won't talk to me for like two days. I'm like, oh, fuck. It's fun to fuck with him. I think Vito gets kind of pissed off from Vito gets pissed off from how many weight loss tips he gets every week. Like everybody feeds him a new tip. Like what you got to do. This is what you got to do. And he'll be like chugging a Mountain Dew, you know, energy drink. While he... <laughs> God, it's so funny. Jesus. I, I, when it's I see out cutting, it's all about uh, calories in calories out. And it starts, it starts to like, you can see him like. <laughs> <laughs> is, is Vito one of those guys? that's like, I'm different. My genetics are different. I can't lose weight. He's one of those, he's one of those guys. No, I think he's just like, he just took it. He wanted to find a system that worked for him, whatever that, whatever that was. So he kind of weaned himself off. You know, he drank all the energy drinks that were in his house, and he's like, "All right, no more, no more of these. I'm not getting any more. <laughs> I need something that works for me." It's like when you're going through the checkout line at like you know Kroger or some shit or Walmart, yeah. and you see all those tabloids. It's like lose thirty pounds in eight seconds, but with eating your favorite food still. And I'm like, oh, "Okay, yeah, good luck, good luck." <laughs> <laughs> I think he's like breaking up with being fat slowly. He's like, well, okay, I'm not just going to, you know, drop it all at once. It's going to take me some time to have, I got to have a conversation with being fat. And then, you know, we're going to have a trial separation. And then, <laughs> then I'm going to break up with being fat. <laughs> I, um, the best way I've ever found, um, to be, to success in dieting is cold turkeying everything on a set date and then going uh, for the two to three month period and then weaning back on. Because once I'm in the, it's very habitual. Once I'm in the scheduling, once I'm habitual, it, yeah. I, even when I come off my diet, it's hard. I'll be eating chicken and rice every day and I can't come off of it. And I'll have to like focus be like, fuck, uh, t I'm going to eat spaghetti Saturday. And then I'll like eat spaghetti and I'll like drink like a few, like, like whiskey and Cokes. I have to wean myself back onto eating like I used to eat. And it takes like six months, like no shit. And then by October, I'm like, all right, fuck it raw. And I'll gain about 20 pounds in one month. And then I go, I start my cut. <laughs> right then i start my cut immediately right so it's like a very it, it works really well for me and uh yeah i've always been real good at dieting ever since the first time i did it i'm just like i'm gonna stop doing this today and the only person that can make me stop doing this is me and the only way i can fail is if i let myself fail and i never do <laughs> it always works i'm just like oh when you realize it's i'm the only one that can do it you're like it's like a weird revelation it's like when you you buy your first house and you live alone for an extended period of time and then you like you know, make some food, you know, have some trash. You, you don't do your, you don't wash your clothes for a while and you look around and you're like, Oh, there's a bunch of shit. Yeah. And you don't think about it. And then a week later you look down and all the shit's still there and you're like, Oh shit, I have, this is all my, th I have to do this or else this is going to sit here for the rest of my life. And uh, it kind of teaches you and then you take accountability for everything. But I, you know, I, maybe some people don't learn that. Like Vito. Just got to get a girl to come over. Then you're like, Oh shit, I got to clean this place oh, up. And like, they broke me. I was living alone for a while. I downloaded Tinder and then girls would come over all the time. And those bitches, I would go to sleep after like, you know, fucking baby gravy them. And I'd wake up and they cleaned my house. And I'm like, okay. And they're like, yeah, I cleaned, you know, and stuff. And I did your dishes and I did your laundry. And I'm like, okay, cool. And then they leave and I'm like, all right, that was weird. It sounds uh, cheaper than my cleaning lady. It was, yeah. Hey, that's, was, uh, this bitch is expensive and she doesn't do all the, she doesn't fold all the laundry. <laughs> out of a girl come over two days later she's like man your house is so clean and I'm like <laughs> 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 it was weird I don't know I don't clean it it's just I can put shit in, in there yeah you're not worried about like stealing your stuff stealing yeah, your I, shorts, I, I, I have a few guitars that's all I really have you know so I wasn't really worried about it um and I didn't care you know I just got divorced I was like not I was like fuck I don't care you were no married ones. yeah I was married for almost oh. seven years oh my god yeah my 20s why um i don't know <laughs> i just thought it was a good idea at the time apparently it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't like a bad deal like it was great we got yeah. a house it was fun we got 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 along and never yeah. had any heart we went on vacation all the time we had we went snowboarding we had a great time we did everything i feel like you do you know um had sex every day never waned and then one day i woke up she was kind of quiet and i'm like hey what's up girl you, you real quiet today and she's like <laughs> I don't love you anymore. I'm leaving. And I'm like, what? And then she was gone two days later. Wow. It was fucked you up. Doing now? Oh, I don't know. I, I haven't, I haven't, uh, my family, even look. yeah, no, my dad, 
Wow. I talk to I talk to my dad almost every at least twice a week. And yeah. once a year, he'll be like, Hey, did you see so and so did this? And I'm like, No, nah, I didn't. And he's like, Oh, okay. She's Thanks, she's dad. been married for like another seven years already. She's married and has kids and shit now. Holy shit. That's crazy. Yeah. She but she just she's fine. It's fine. Um well but, don't do it again, you know, fool nope. me once. Nope. <laughs> Ain't happening. Ain't happening, boys. I'd rather die. You can, I'll have a girl that can come over, and if you want to stay and you're cool as fuck, that will do that. But uh, other than that, yeah, I ain't, I ain't live in the tiny house out back, the tiny, yeah, the pool house, yeah. Pink house. yeah, yeah, get in the pool house. I ain't, uh, I ain't bringing the government in on it. That's weird. Don't know why I would. It was, it was. It my uh, divorce was very simple. We, she like didn't fuck me at all. It was like all assets have been separated prior to signing and then nothing happened. She just left my house and that was it. <laughs> wow. And then I signed the documents and it was over. What a dream. It worked out. It worked out really well. Um, so props to, to her for not fucking me over because she could have probably. Um, speaking of fucking me over, look at Disco Cobra in the chat. Oh my God. Look at this man. It says how far are we from the 24 hour stream? If we hit Nugget Snake today, it'll be Two four two, so we'll be eight away. Think we can get it before the end of the year? I don't know. It. I was. I was planning on it being in January, um, because that would be cutting it like right into like the week of Christmas if uh, if it, we hit it. Uh, probably not. Still would be cool. What's the latest news for today? And any updates? Oh, we got a lot of stuff. We haven't talked about any of the subject matters because we. It's dick. We just we just fucking talk about random shit. <laughs> can't, can't help. It. We talk about fat women. It's what we do. Thank you, Disco. I love you. That's I appreciate all I was talking about. That's I why I lost it. my YouTube channel because I, <laughs> because I, I'm 100 percent sure YouTube has some big fat woman in there who hates me personally and is like yeah. tracking me and following me. Uh, it's not what the subject. It's just how much I love talking about fat women. They could tell and like, yeah, that's too, that's too far. That's hate speech. Get rid of them. Yeah, I don't. Uh, why are fat women a protected class now? I think they were for a minute. They've always been. That's really, it's only been <laughs> fat women. And they trick us into thinking that it's black people, whatever, Asians, Jewish people, just to distract from we can't make fun of them. That's They have us arguing about the N-word so we don't use the hey, you fat bitch word. It's their game plan. <laughs> that is true. I mean, I, I wouldn't, I, I don't uh, say that to a fat woman's face, but I do uh, feel disgust when I see them. It's yeah. something I can't control. All these dummies are like, oh, we got to do this. This You got to be able to say the N-word and getting fired for saying the N-word. That's unacceptable. It's like you guys can get fired for calling a woman fat, too. And you're not I don't see you campaigning to bring that back. So, you know, let's remember what's important here. It's because a lot of them don't want to be called fat either. Like the fat dudes either. Yeah. You know? Or the dad. Boss. Yeah. Uh, there's this it's weird. Com- fucking fat, probably. I don't, have, have you seen? Ben oh, Street? yeah. I, I haven't, but. Yeah, his yeah. Wife was a little quirky. Well, in every woman, almost every single woman, with the exception of like one percent of women, are overweight after they're twenty five. Yeah, so true. they're all fat. You know, I don't. There's, I don't have a single friend that's like my age that has a girlfriend that's not fat. You know, mm. they're all fat now. Can't really do anything about it. They're just fucking. They can't stop eating, or they eat the same thing they did when they were twenty four and had decent like metabolisms, and yeah. they just continue to eat, and then they start drinking more because you're getting older. You drink more, you more social situations, and you just go. <laughs> A lot of people don't lose that, that there's I know I know 35 year olds like women that still just eat pizza rolls like every day. And I'm like, well, you, that's that's that is food for a 12 year old. What are you Watch doing? that down with some wine. Why don't you? You yeah. fat. Oh, fish. you already know they're doing that. They love uh, that shit. Netflix and a and half a wine. Ugh. You know, how many girls I go, I, around, I go to like Whole Foods. I have these little stickers that I put on the wine bottles at Whole Foods. And it says there's 10,000 calories in every bottle of wine. And I just put that around. <laughs> that's my thing. A Johnny Appleseed, and you're like, what? Hoping that I'll, you know, that it'll stop them. <laughs> That's the thing, man. I've, uh, it's weird because back when I was on Tinder, I would message, you know, a girl or whatever, um, because that's what you do. And I shit you not, the nine out of 10 women, their interests were Netflix and wine. <laughs> and I'm like, net, watching TV is not an interest, ma'am. You know what an interest is? Reading. No, that's what I can read too. It's not an interest. <laughs> like, you can't have an interest in like in Netflix. It's competing to distract you yeah. from things. Like that's not an interest. You're, it's you're passive in that experience. 
Yeah, imagine somebody saying, "Hey, what's your interest?" It's like, "Oh, I'm interested in the uh, content creator uh, Camelot three two one on YouTube." It's like they'd be like, "That's gay, man." <laughs> like, yeah, and it is. It would be, and everybody in the chat agrees that watches me that they are all gay for doing this. I'm interested in podcasts. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, are you gonna say oh, so you? So you have your own podcast then? Oh no, I just yeah. watched them. It's like what? Yeah, hold on. <laughs> Hold on, name it. <laughs> I'm confused. Slag of us says, I'm just giving criticism, bro. People who give criticism don't just make stuff up. Learn to take criticism. I, uh, I'll learn how to take uh, criticism better. Sorry for, <laughs> sorry for going off the handle. <laughs> that, sorry for going off the handle there. <laughs> sorry for waking out on you, man. Thank you, Slag of us. Appreciate you. Um, <laughs> my boy, Nick. Ricada with a $20. 20 bucks? Nick Ricada's only got 20 bucks in his pocket? Come on. Yeah, dude. Fucking Mr. Rumble himself with $20. <laughs> Throw that back. Don't let him get, don't let him <laughs> refund you like that. <laughs> what the fuck, man? Oh, get Eric's lying here. He will toss that $20 back. What it is. Fuck you. It's like when you tip a waitress $1 on a $67 check. Yeah. Jesus. You can have the one dollar back. Thank you, Nick. Says eat less calories than your body it's uses, lose weight. I get for my family. Like, oh, here's a coloring book. There you go. Enjoy it. <laughs> it's almost like math. It's called thermodynamics. Thank you, uh, Ricada. Nick Ricada. Appreciate you, dude. Love you. Um, Big Sal up north. I'll come over and drink your Woodfords, but just don't ask me to do your laundry. Thank you, Big Sal. I appreciate you. Yeah, I'm almost out. I have like two shots of Woodford left for future fight milks. Thank you, Big Sal. Um, I love you. Appreciate you for your gold boy. Um, putting us 170 from Naked Snake for the 242nd time. I love you. That's where I take my shirt off and jiggle my titties. Ooh. Let's go, people. Come on. <laughs> see those. Ooh. See the uh, muscle milk man's titties over here. Neon Knight Rider says, are the Gumps winning this SEC this year? What's the Gumps? Like Alabama? I don't watch football, but uh, I, I hope so, I guess. I don't know. I it, does it po positively does it positively impact my state and make me pay less taxes? If so, yes, but I don't think it does. <laughs> my property tax continues to go up. Oh God! Oh yeah, well, it was party. It was seven hundred fifty dollars five years ago. My per year seven hundred fifty dollars per year. It was eight grand this year. Wait, what? Your property tax went up ten, eleven times? Yeah. Why? I don't know. No idea. <laughs> Was someone not paying the taxes on your house for the last? No, it was years? it was well, it was escrowed out a mortgage, and um, every year it went up. Like I, I remember two years ago, it was two or three years ago, it was thirteen hundred. Two years ago, it was thirty eight hundred. One year ago, it was no. One year ago, it was thirty eight hundred. This year, it was eight grand. What the fuck? Where do you live? In Huntsville, Alabama. You guys have high property tax. That's like uh, I mean, that's like California. That's like L.A. property taxes. Yeah, it's um, it's our population in the last 10 years has over doubled, I think. And there's, it, there used to be these long stretches of roads with just grass, like plains on the side of the roads. And now there are 100% apartment complexes for miles because. So that made like, property tax go up. That's a I bit. Guess. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck happened, but I just wish it would go down. Cause it's brutal. Every, every time I get the bill, I'm like, this is crazy. This yeah. It doesn't crazy. work like that. It's not only going up. <clears throat> um, Nick Kata says, I only had 20 because I was going to give 200 to Dick. Now I'm going to give it to Vito. Put it on Vito Loses. Put it on, so VitoLoses.com. It's like uh, if Vito doesn't lose 30 pounds in uh, six months, he doesn't get any of the money. So this is the last week. And last time we weighed him, he had like 13 pounds to go. Oh, so I smart. don't think, yeah, he's, I don't think there's any way he can make weigh in. So people should dump like, ten thousand dollars into it so he can see all the money that he's that he's gonna miss by missing his way and i think that would be hilarious wow eleven hundred dollars bro i'm doing this for free and i've already out i'm losing 30 pounds and i'm already <laughs> a normal weight and i'm cutting 30 pounds for yeah Vito, he could he could take a shit and like diet for two weeks and lose 30 pounds uh he's gonna have to take his clothes off or something for the for the final way and i don't know what I don't know what he can what he can cut. Maybe starve himself all day, throw up right before the show. I don't know how he's going to do it. Has he he's lost like, any weight yet? Yeah, he lost seventeen pounds. Um, oh, so he has thirteen left. Yeah, he did. He started okay, then he got then he did real bad, and he's on Ozempic too. So I don't know 
what he's doing. Uh, then he kind of floundered. He was like, I think he was depressed about not doing well. And then he last month, he really nailed it. But it's going to be too little too late. I think he's cutting yeah. it close. It's crazy because I've almost I've lost 15 pounds in two and a half weeks. <laughs> and I started at 203. <laughs> it's crazy, man. Oh, my God. Because when you're a real big guy and you yeah. go on a crash cut diet, you can lose like 50 pounds in a month, man. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he, it's crazy. That's like the lowest. God, I wish somebody had set up a CodyLoses.com. This is some bullshit. <laughs> he's got a long con. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. Oh, man. Uh, Psycho Crusher. Damn, what a pink ass boy. Wow. Putting us 120 from Nick and Snake because my super chat is bigger than Nick's. Oh, damn, Nick. You getting slapped around, boy. Thank you, Psycho. Appreciate you. Love you. My boy, Psycho Crusher, is always here, always supporting your boy. Thank you so much, my friend. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You go to this hell. Thank you. Love you. And Samantha, by the way, um, text me, please. Text me. Thank you. So, I, mean, I forgot to text you today um, about a future video thing. Um, so thank you. Um, what did I see on Twitter the other day? There was this, there's been this weird, like, uh, goofy drama thing that's been really divisive. Because I remember you you messaged me and you're like, hey, bro, like, let's do a show maybe. But, you know, just for oh, yeah. warning. And I'm like, oh, fuck, I don't give a fuck. You know, I don't, I'll talk to whoever. I don't give a fuck. And we we drank, we drank together all the time. So who gets, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Um, I'm not tribalistic. I don't take sides i don't uh i think all of it's goofy i actually I, I watch all of it as an entertainment thing it's funny um, and i'll give my takes on it kind of but i also just like to talk to people and hear what it's all about um it's just like one side won't talk to me so i'm like well huh. they just look you know it just looks i guess it appears that way but there was this weird drama and it's still kind of going on but there was this uh this thing where um eric uh you know eric july the awesome deal said that he had receipts that you and or Vito emailed the International School of Ministry and then he didn't have receipts after being asked about it again. It was weird. What what happened there? Do you know? Yeah, well, what happened was uh, Eric was raised by a single mother, so he learned how to deal with conflict by lying. Um, and that's what he tried to do with me and Vito, where he said... He tried to deflect his guilt in violating a trademark and not either either not looking up if the trademark was available or looking it up, finding it was taken and ignoring it, selling his comic for six million dollars, causing all kinds of controversy, calling people the N-word and then getting sued by the actual trademark owner of ISOM, which would have a problem with all this behavior damaging their brand. Um, he chose to deflect all of this criminality by blaming me and Vito for posing as an agent of ourselves, which is fucking retarded. Like, hi, I work for Dick and Vito. If we're if we're trying to if we're trying to trick someone into suing you, we're not gonna pretend to be us, you f you retarded idiot, right? We're gonna pretend to be Camelot. Hi, I work for <laughs> Camelot News. No! Uh, <laughs> why, why have some questions about Isa? It's obviously just a guy who was pissed off that you that you flagged his Twitter and said, oh, you flagged my Twitter, I'll fucking show you a flag. Hey, who owns Isa? I'm you. Check this out. Eh, fuck you. That's why you don't flag people, right? Because it comes around and bites you in the ass. Um, but Eric, de Eric decided to make up the story that it was us posing as our, our own reporter. And that he had proof of this, and he obviously has no proof. I mean, he it's honestly, it's just ganging up on Vito, because I don't i don't care. I think the email's hilarious. Uh, at this point, I wish I would have sent it so I could fucking tape it to his warehouse door and say, go fuck yourself, uh, you hairy-armed, illiterate idiot. Um, but they're just, they're, make, like, all these, this, this, the enti this entire sphere of people hates Vito because he's extremely liberal, and it's, he's annoyingly liberal. Not as annoying as, uh, other annoying liberals I've known, but he is annoyingly liberal. Um, and he's fat. So they think they can just pick on him for, and, and beat him up for their audience, which is cool. I mean, that's yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, fair. That's fair. Yeah. You know, that's funny. Okay. But the lying about your, you're responsible for this lawsuit I'm in. That's retarded. It's garbage. Turned out to be bogus. Obviously bogus. He was on, uh, Eric was on Nick's show and he even said, well, you know, they, I don't have any proof. They could have, 
email. And it's like, well, you told everyone that you had proof and they ran with it. Fucking quartering is like, oh, anything you need, Eric. <laughs> Whatever you need. Oh. Um, and now they all look like assholes because they believed you. So don't lie is the less is the moral of the story. And then it kind of it kind of you kind of went away a little. I haven't it's been like God, it was it was fucking all anybody was talking about for a minute there. And it kind of like Yeah in a way a little. Isn't that weird? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, we got it. We got these bastards finally. It's like, oh, uh, let's see the receipts. Well, uh, what it is is I don't really have those the receipts that I said. Uh, like, okay, man, well, you guys just gotta like you gotta chill the fuck out. Like this is uh this all this shit is is ve- all this shit is very stupid, um, but whatever you know you're getting lost in the sauce. Yeah, I don't know if you have that phrase in independent comics, but you're getting lost. There's a sauce, and you're getting lost in it. Yeah, it was weird. Um, when as I watched it played out, and I just had a I had Nick on my show back then. Nick would be on my show like once a week, and then people started getting mad at me because Nick was on my show, and I was like, why is everybody mad at me because Nick's on my show? And then it was because he gave like a legal analysis of the trademark thing. And he was like, well, yeah, it's obviously it's, it's copyright infringement and everybody was mad at him. And then they were mad at me because I'm friends with Nick. And I was like, Oh, this is bullshit. What's happening. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That sucks. You should, if you don't, if if you thought that was bad, you should try being friends with Ethan Ralph and see how, and see how your friends stick around after that. (laughs) (laughs) Well, uh, props to Ethan Ralph. (laughs) Because he he sh- there should have been an Ethan Ralph loses dot com because he would have won. That dude's Dude, thin he, as fuck now. He's dropped like a hundred pounds. I feel yeah. like he did it your way, where he just decided, well, the only person that can do this is me, and I, that empowers me. Yeah, a hundred percent. That's all you gotta do. And the way I see it is, if you do not, if you don't see it that way, and you you're like, I'm gonna try this diet. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it. You're fucked. You're gonna fail. If because you're already you already. No, you're gonna fail. You're already pr- planning on failing, so you're fucked. Yeah. So, um, if you plan not to fail. You might not fail. Ashley, I love you. Appreciate you. Um, thank you so much. Hey, all right. That's not enough whys in that. Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you're you're DMing Camelot, come on, girl. Come on, come on. That was like that was the gayest shit when I was uh, on Tinder, and girls would actually message me, and they would just say, "Hey," and I'm like, "You ain't got nothing else." I'm supposed to tell you a joke, but oh, I would drag my sack through a thousand miles of broken glass to hear you fart through a walkie-talkie. And you know, you gonna tell me, "Hey, are you yeah. shitting me?" Come on, give me a little why for the effort. Give me another why for the effort, there, honey. Come on. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Ashley. I love you. Uh, me says, Dick, or oh, is your scale actually working properly for the minus seventeen weigh-in? Didn't sound like it from what you said on TDS. Well, it's broken now, so I had to get a new one uh, emergency shipped to my house, and this new one has an app so that I can monitor it so that Vito cannot tamper with it in any way. Um, and it does body fat percentage. I'm not going to tell him that. Ooh, so, so nice. That's a little secret. for 71. It's like, oh, my God. 71%. How is that humanly possible? <laughs> it's, it's humidity. and the, Oh, no, it's the body fat. Oh, my God. He's going to show up on crutches. And a stub. Let's do this. I'm gonna cut his own own foot off just to make way. <laughs> he he's gonna have to get like a haircut. And he's only got like you know a little tiny bit of stubble, but he's gonna have to get rid of it. Just just all of it. Take it all off. Go, Dude, gonna... he's got to get naked. I mean, he's got. If he's serious about winning twelve hundred bucks, he has got to strip down even your underpants. Where what? Uh, that's that could lose you the game. Yeah. You know. Yeah, he should. Um, he should go sit in a sauna for like twelve hours before. And don't yeah. drink any water for like a week. Bear, yeah. Come there crawling. <laughs> Get on the way. Oh, no water <laughs> weight. No water weight. Thank you, me. Um, you know what's more annoying about the Eric lawsuit thing? Right when it happened, I said, you're going to have to pay. You should pay a little fine. Change the name of your comic book and pay like a small licensing fee for future comics. You know, even if it's like, even if it's like. 50 cents a book or 50 cents an ISOM book or something like that. Like how, you're, you're ahead of the game. Then you make, you make a deal. You have a nice PR release with these guys, but instead he makes a video calling them fake Christians, implying that they're fake Christians. It's like, bro, this is, this isn't like a hater that you're monetizing. This is a global Christian ministry. Like, are you, are you fucking stupid? What, uh, this is not how you handle this. Yeah. Um, um 
I I'm, saw... I'm giving good advice. And all these idiots are saying like, oh, yeah, fuck, fuck them. Yeah, man, you, bro, you go. You, ta you take it to the mattress. Like, you don't have a fucking mattress big enough for an international ministry, bro. It's uh, maybe they just want to watch the shit show. <laughs> They're like encouraging yeah. it to make it worse. I don't know. Yeah. Because when I, I saw that video, I watched that whole video. Um, and it was he kept referring to the the shepherd guy and implying that he was like shitty, like and he kept saying not what a real Christian would do and all this stuff. And I'm like, I feel like this would just piss me off more if I was the guy. <laughs> and yeah. like you have infinite income to kill like anybody with like at that point i don't know i don't know i like i just I got back from africa like drilling wells and giving ebola vaccines to little kids and i'm listening to eric july the gangbanger call me a fake christian like huh, okay not today satan yeah uh, <laughs> yeah I i'm a good guy but i have lawyers and their their relationship with the lord is fuzzy at best yeah i think um yeah, that was the the only really thing I watched. I, I watched the the legal analysis from the actual um, Nick when he did the legal analysis, and then I watched that video of him responding to like the international school ministry, and I was like, ah, I don't feel like that was a good move. <laughs> like, the, I probably wouldn't even have talked about them at all. I would have just like met with them and been like, let's fucking fix this immediately, man. Yeah, you know, that's what I would have done. How but, much can I pay you guys? You know, I changed yeah. the name, the Adventures of Isom. No big deal. I'll throw all the merch away. Maybe I could sell it if I cut you in. Maybe I call. Maybe I say the N-word less on my streams. I'll do my best. But, you know, it's part of my culture as a, a guy who's pretending to act more black and poor than he is that I say it as much as possible. So uh, I would appreciate it if you let me continue to do that. But whatever. We can work. Let's work it out a deal because you do own it. Yeah. And then I don't even know. I haven't been paying attention to it uh, since I watched that video, probably. But um he said he met with them and they had something he thought they had it figured out. And then they changed the whole deal changed or something. And now they're going forward with a lawsuit or something. I can't, I haven't, I don't think there's been any development since then. Now, uh, Riley has a subscription to their, their, uh, documents folder on Pacer. Whenever the, whenever new law stuff breaks, he posts it immediately. Um, I think they just pushed back the response until like December at some point. So I can respond to the lawsuit. Well, well, damn. We'll see what I would have. Yeah, I'll just change the fucking name. I've been easy for me. Uh, Chris Bacon says, I see I was correct to put Dick in the reverse detractor hall of fame in our own class. He never disappoints. Thank you, Chris Bacon. <laughs> I love that guy, Chris Bacon. I like bacon. So, yeah, hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't get to eat it, but I love it. Um, I wonder if he has every Chris I've ever met hates their first name, Chris, and goes by like their middle name or some version of it. I wonder if he feels the same way. Yeah. Somehow it's feel like he might be the exception. Yeah, imagine being like named John or Chris. That would suck. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's like, oh, it's John. It's like, yeah, that's like, so is half of America. Like, <laughs> John. Damn. That would suck. Well, my name's my name's Cody, so that sucks too. That's like you think Muhammad's feel like that? Oh yeah. Muhammad's in Europe. <laughs> yeah, Muhammad. Yeah. You call me Mo. And it's I like, go by my middle name. It's like we are all three Muhammad. And it's like, oh, what about him? He's like, I'll commit. It's like, oh fuck. <laughs> Of course, of course you are. It's, there's only two names, Ahmed and Muhammad. Like, rest in peace. Hey, Chris, love you. Ashley, look at it. She put 90 wiles in there. She's there so you go. Oh, that's there. too many. She's crazy. <laughs> Left. Red flag. <laughs> Red flag. Thank you, Ashley. I love you. Um, beautiful face. Slagless says, uh, why should Eric take advice from someone dumb enough to get sued for dating someone else's ex? Uh, well, because I won that lawsuit. <laughs> That's why I won that lawsuit in both courts, the court of law and the court of public opinion. Uh, yeah, I don't even I don't even know that story. Either. I don't know oh, any really? lore. Why do I not know any lore? Oh, uh, that lawsuit bought this house that I'm in. You didn't know about this? I want to know the story now. Uh, Maddox, Maddox, you know, Maddox. Ma I've heard. Yeah, I've heard the Maddox guy. Yeah. OK, so we had a podcast. Um, he he got he got pissed and uh ended it uh because i started dating his ex-girlfriend uh the girl who i'm still with now and i started teasing him because he like he threw a big tantrum ended the show and then he was doing like a bunch of like little underhanded shit behind the scenes like stealing our podcast feed and and uh, uh doing shit like that so i was just teasing him on my new show the dick show 
And out of no, then he the, he released a video uh, to like the entire LA comedy scene and his personal accounts, uh, a 13 minute video explaining why the show ended and that I was a rape apologist. Let me try, I got to go back nine years for some of this stuff that I'm trying to remember. Uh, so I got kicked out of UCB comedy. I was on a, a, hitch, a, a huge show there. I got kicked out of that. Like all my friends disowned me and I was like, oh, social pariah. Um, I think that was in like 20, 2016. So all the it, Trump stuff was at a fervor reached a fever pitched um, of uh, 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 the uh, the progressives in L.A. were itching to lynch someone. Um, but then after after getting made fun of continually for that, that's when I like ramped the making fun of into high gear. I'm like, all right, well, you kind of you've ruined my life. You've killed a significant part of it. So now it's the only thing I have is making fun of you. And I'm good yeah. at that. Well, that's I'm, I'm all out of bubble gum. Right. Yeah. So we're doing songs every week. Uh, this guy, Asterios, made a Christmas album called The uh, Cucksmas Carols that was all about Maddox. Uh, we had a guy that pretended to be Maddox that called in all the time. Just basic like radio stuff, like stern, old classic Stern stuff, making fun of him. Yeah. So his response um, was to sue me. He's su a dog bite lawyer, this total con artist, uh, shitbag lawyer. Uh, convinced who had a who has a, a DUI breathalyzer on his car. We found out later. Uh, convinced Maddox to sue me for three hundred and eighty million dollars for making fun of him. What it was like it was like the the charges were like stealing fans, um, being a racist, like all oh, the the lawsuits. That's why fucking Nick is famous because Nick Nick Ricada listened to my show and fired up a live stream and just read. Maddox's lawsuit and made fun of it. That was like the first thing he ever did. Um, so that was like a year of just Maddox would never say anything about it. Never, never responded at all because he was taking the high road. Right. Fucking idiot. Coward. Uh, and like a year of that Maddox's girlfriend, we got a restraining order against Maddox's girlfriend because she wouldn't stop calling my girlfriend's school. Is it like, just like insane shit? Yeah. Uh, and then I won. And that was like, that's it was like the funniest thing that ever happened. Um, did you so did you counter sue for a certain amount? Is that how that worked? No, no, I I just let the justice system work itself out, you know. Oh, really? Uh, well, rock on. Yeah. That was funny. You, you said it paid for your house? Oh yeah. That's the my the day Maddox sued me, my Patreon went from like two thousand dollars to like eighteen thousand dollars a month. Damn. Um, people weren't happy about it. That's wild. That's wild. Nick's going to a, a lawsuit that's similar. He's getting sued by some guy. I can't remember his name now. I'm terrible with names. Somebody's uh, somebody in the chat will probably bring it up. But uh, yeah, he's going through something kind of similar. I feel like. Yeah, uh, I don't. Even, I know specifics of that, or I remember them, but I don't even want to say them because I don't want to get your stream taken down. Yeah, no, nah, well, seems like a fucking lunatic. He is definitely a lunatic. <laughs> uh, that's the yeah. nicest thing I would say about him. Yeah. Hell snake. Oh yeah, everybody in the chat monograph. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, it, it's name is very unique, and yet I always forget it. Thank you, Hell Snake. Appreciate you. Welcome back, dude. I feel like I haven't seen you in a second. And uh, everybody that's shitting on Slagless in the chat, he's just asking questions. Stop being bitches. He's he's a good dude. He talks. He he literally talks about my penis every day. It's fine. Okay. You know. Uh, oh, the, so the best part of the, of Maddox's lawsuit is in the middle of in the middle of the lawsuit. He sued me for like half a billion dollars, right? Because his attorney is uh, either drunk or incompetent. I don't know. Um, and to this day, if you search for his attorney's name on Google, uh, someone bought the domain name world's worst dot lawyer. And that's <laughs> number one for his name, Kevin Landau, uh, <laughs> during all of the lawsuit, um, I found in my girlfriend's belongings, this letter Maddox had written her to get back together with him. Wow. Uh, when she dumped him like forever ago left and he tried to, he slipped this please get back together with me letter and her stuff um, as she left that she never found. So I found it and then read it to a, we had a big show where it was like 300 people at this uh, comedy theater in, in Chicago. And this guy played the, the Titanic song on a violin. Why <laughs> somebody read this get back together with me letter. Pretty. It was really, really oh, oh, exquisite cruelty. Yeah, I feel like that would be very satisfying to just go through and then win and just God, that'd be that'd be something to you'd think about forever the rest of your uh -huh. life. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, speaking of great, 
Make sure you guys like the show. We're 80 locks away from the overall goal for today. And also we're 90 away from Naked Snake. 590 away from Fight Milk. That might be the wrong math. It. I'm, I'm a redneck guy. I can't help it. Um, and uh, Nick did text me and say he might pop in soon. So um, just before I forget. So uh, thank you guys for that. But uh, I want to ask you about or ask you if you saw this thing with Nardo Wick. So Nardo Wick's this rapper, right? It's been all over Twitter. He's like this rapper and this like tiny frail white kid walks up to him to try to get his autograph or a, a selfie. And they just, his security beats the living oh, shit out of this kid. Yeah. <laughs> puts him in a coma, brain bleed, like oh. probably will never recover. And uh, all because he walked up and wanted uh, an autograph from this rapper. And he was like behind the club and had like a bunch of his bodyguards around. And he, he didn't walk up in between all of them. He walked up to the side and was just standing there with like a pen or his phone. He like standing here oh, like no. this. They just wrecked this dude. I'll pull up the video real quick. Um, it is brutal, man. It is brutal. And the Nan, the Nando guy, Nardo, um, he already released a public apology, obviously, because you know his studio or whoever he works, they're gonna, they're like, hey, bro, you gotta apologize now, like right now, yeah. <laughs> because um, I don't think it's gonna help. He's still gonna be paying out the living ass for this. Um. But yeah, it's why was the security so amped up to fight? It's to because fight. he hired some of his friends, probably from his uh, like hometown, instead of hiring real security. So they just yeah. wanted to beat the shit out of a kid. Probably I don't know. Uh, it's hard to say. But this is the video right here. You can see this kid. This is the kid. See how he's a tiny little kid <laughs> right here. He's like walks up, and this, this the big you? security guard just knocks him out immediately. Oh no! From behind, he hits his head oh. on the brick wall. Oh, yeah, like for no reason. And then it's not done. This guy's hungry or for some reason. He just sees him get knocked out. He's standing. He's he, this guy's outstanding, right? Yeah. And this this dude is just like, oh, fuck it. I'm going to join in and go to prison. On, <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. So that that there there that dude's going to be paying all the dude's medical bills and a restitution of some ungodly amount of money. <laughs> wow has scott adams seen this what is oh. he? <laughs> i'm sure he has <laughs> yeah well uh, oh. now look i gotta speak from like the i guess you would call it a devil's advocate position um there's no way in hell anywhere in my bones would i ever walk up to a group of like dudes standing beside a van all huddled up there's no fucking way I would never do yeah. that, bro. I would never go down Tuscaloosa Avenue at 3 a.m. in Gadsden. You best believe I ain't going down this. I ain't going up to that, those people. Maybe say, hey, can I get a selfie from 25 feet away? But I'm not walking into that. That's fucking crazy. That kid, and that kid doesn't know any better, man. He, he probably just listens to the music, likes the music. <laughs> He's the, they're not. What was that? Like an apartment complex? Where the fuck It was like they? after a show, I think. Like outside oh, the show or bro. something. Oh, that's so bad. Yeah, he's fucked. Oh well, I don't. The Nardo guy's gonna spend. He's gonna have to spend money. Um, the, he is, so. his studio is probably just gonna have. They probably have an insurance policy for this shit. Just but mm -hmm. still, that the bodyguard should definitely uh, go to prison or at least be charged with some kind of assault. That's because that dude just not for no reason knocks this little kid. Out. And uh, he's, I think he's, he's not, he's not a super little kid. He's like a young, young man, young kid, like teenager, maybe late teens. But he's so little. <laughs> so it's, Knocked him the fuck out, like for no. And his reaction was so pathetic, I'm like, uh, uh like yeah, instantly brain dead. I'm like, oh man. And that other guy just jumps on him and starts beating the shit out of him for no reason. And it's weird because maybe he was trying to bring him back to life. <laughs> if I hit him harder, he'll snap back in. <laughs> you can feel it, like when he starts, like, he jumps on him and starts hitting him, and then people have to pull this other guy off of him. And I'm like, where to to be able to have to do that. Okay, I've been in like two fights my entire life when I was in school. And for somebody to have to pull somebody off another, you have to feel such intense rage. And I'm like, what? This guy had no reason. None of these people had any reason to feel intense rage, but they fucking felt it. And I'm like, how did you fucking get that mad for no reason? It's weird. Dude just jumped. They, they just really wanted to get into a fight at that show, I think. Maybe. Somebody like wound them up and cock teased them with I the, guess so. the fight. It should have been a more like a, a better opponent because <laughs> that dude was just he was like a grunt from Halo, man. That was like Worski getting hit with by Salt Poppy. <laughs> you see oh, that? Poor Worski, God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Xander says, uh, sad you never did the court reactment video. 
Oh, is that me? Yeah. Yeah, probably. I have a lot. I have a lot of ideas that I didn't follow through on. <laughs> yeah, story of my life. I had so many ideas. I I had this idea once because my content was pretty much centered all around retail and like talking about retail and stuff like that. I'm um, getting on the inside and releasing the stuff and just having a good time with it. And uh, I bought this Walmart vest and I was gonna walk into the AD lounge and like quit, but not even work at Walmart. I I worked at yeah. Walmart as a district manager years ago. Yeah, And so you could just walk in the back. No one fucking cares. So I was going to get a Walmart vest and walk in the back with like a stupid name tag on and like quit and say like, I was going to like find out one of the uh, assistant managers names and just be like, I'm quitting. Like she squeezed my ass. So and so like Sherry squeezed my ass. I'm quitting. And then have like the, the manager like try to prevent me from quitting. And but yeah. I don't even work there. It'd be like a joke video or something. And uh, I, I bought the vest and then I never did it. Cause I got so stressed out. I'm like, I can't do this. <laughs> I can't do this. Uh, I think I saw someone did that like, this week. Really? Well, shit. Yeah. That's funny you say that. It. I think someone <laughs> finally did it. Uh, v- I wanted Vito and I to go protest the the writer's strike as robots, like dress up like robots with tinfoil, like Osimo, uh, 9,000. <laughs> oh, my strike. God. <laughs> or AI. But Vito didn't want to do it either. He didn't think it was funny or uh, he wanted to get a job in Hollywood. I don't know. So we didn't do it. Yeah, that router strike was really strange. And it, there was a point where they were going to make $120 million or something, and then Fran Drescher like, denied it or something, or said that wasn't enough or something. <laughs> I'm like, damn, Fran Drescher. You ain't even working in Hollywood. What are you doing here? <laughs> Get out of here with your ass. She's like, I need to make a statement. I'm like, there's a lot of people relying on this, <laughs> and you just trying to make a statement. <laughs> like, Yeah. Blame yeah, it really that. sucked for all the all the people in like um, who are not writers and actors. Just like the the people like the janitors and the camera guys and the craft services people who just don't get to work. Yeah. I'm going to fucking raise. Nope. They're fucked. Yeah. It's a, well, it was, it, that was the thing that I thought was so s- silly about the whole thing is you have all these people that are getting actually affected by it, but on the line for striking, you have like Mark Ruffalo and all these other like big name actors with like tattered clothes. And I'm like, what the fuck are they doing? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, I feel like it devalued, devalued the movement so much. If you just have like normal people that are working in the industry out there, like protesting, that's one thing. But then you just get like, oh, net worth two hundred eighty million dollars holding the sign. Fairness, we need fairness. I'm like, fuck off, get out of here, Will. Yeah. What the fuck are you doing here? Yeah. Fuck off. You're already you got like nineteen Ferraris. Eat my ass. You know. So we can't pay our bills. Not you, Will Smith. You can fuck, get out of here. Pay you fucking bills. Thanks, bro. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah. It was really strange. Very very strange time. Um. But yeah, um, that Nardo guy, that Nardo rapper guy, yeah, fuck. Actually, let me pull up his, let me pull up his apology because I never even watched that. Um, I actually had it here two seconds ago. So this is the rapper from that uh, kid getting the knocked the hell out. This is the rapper apologizing. Um, acclaimed rapper Nardo Wick. I've never even heard this. Now, to be fair, I don't think I've heard of any rappers in the last twenty years or know who they are. Um, but here's his apology. Let me turn on the sound. There we go. So let's see what he says here. I don't condone that situation that happened. I don't stand for that situation that happened. I was fully on what that situation was about to take place. Feel me? As soon as it happened, I tried to de-escalate the situation. And after the situation, I, I, I got in contact with his mama. I sent him my number. I called, asked how he was doing. I told her I'd do anything to make it up to him as a fan. You feel me? I, I told her to keep me updated on his health. And, and and it ain't about trying to stop nothing from happening because I don't want to get with nothing. Nah, it ain't none of that. You feel me? I, I genuinely care about the fan. That's all I'm worrying about right now. I don't give a damn about it. Like, wait, everybody talking about, talking about, sue, sue, sue. I don't care about that. They're they going to do it. They got to do it. They do what they do. You feel me? Right now, I'm worrying about the fan. He's straight. And I, you feel me? I just want him to know that. I ain't condone that. I ain't want that to happen. That ain't how I treat my fans. I love my fans. You feel me? All right. I don't know. I feel like I would have enunciated more, but that's fine. Um, because I, I didn't know. take another one. Let's do it. Let's do a second take. No, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Maybe uh, he said it. You feel me a little too much there. You feel me? It's like no. She's a, she's a fifty eight year old woman. She doesn't feel you, man. She's confused right now. What you saying? No, but uh, I guess that is your eyes, maybe, or we'll draw little eyeballs on your eyelids. Yeah. So that's to be one. fair. It's better than none. That was because at least he 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 seemed kind of uh he seemed to. A little bit more genuine than some of these like scripted apologies. He was, yeah. He was like, yeah, I don't, I didn't condone that. I don't feel like that was good. That sucked. You know, whatever. Um, you don't condone it. No one was asking if 
no one even <laughs> thought you might have condoned it. Like that's yeah. uh Yeah. It's not the worst apology. Horrible but... tragedy. Yeah, yeah, not the worst. You're right. Yeah, it wasn't the worst. Uh, it's not those YouTuber apologies where they take a big sigh right before. <sighs> you may have heard. It's like, bitch, shut up. So <laughs> you may have here's my script. It's like that uh that one guy who hasn't released an apology yet, which is shocking to me. It, uh, unbeknownst to me so far. What's his name? Yeah. The completionist. Did you hear about this shit? Oh, the charity fraud yeah, guy. So the Gerard guy, the completionist, had six hundred thousand dollars he uh raised for charities and he claimed over a dozen times that these are being sent and he named the charities they were being sent to and people were kept donating 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 yeah and then he had never sent them and then after 10 years he's like yeah then i found out like after 10 years and i'm like you found you found out after 10 okay uh that's a, okay um and then he he's like yeah and then he was on a uh, a conference call with mudahar and Carl Carl Jobs and was like he was like just tell me where the donated and I'll do it right now and I'm like bro you shouldn't that's you oh listening. no <laughs> no keep it man it's too late yeah it's fuck you've already I mean you've already committed tra- charity fraud it's over yeah but, and then there was a hundred and fifteen grand or hundred and five grand missing from the six hundred grand because everybody I saw Beto tweet this when it happened Beto's like uh well I mean the money was completely untouched and I like commented on it. I was like uh Beto one hundred five grand was taken from it for under tax code. It's under the tax bucket. You know how, like, when you do your exemptions every year, it's like, yeah, yeah, fucking fifty things, and you have them all detailed. Yeah, it was uh-huh. one bucket for ten years that said expenses, and it was one hundred five grand, just gone. Uh, and I'm like, maybe it was. it was it was untouched, so that made it okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and um, they they interviewed him, and they're like, the hungry kids. Like, is it okay for them that they have yeah. to wait six years to eat? Is that fine? <laughs> It's fine. Um, but um, I was like, uh, I, I listened to the conference call with him and Mudahar, and they're like, what about these expenses? 105 grand or whatever. And the guy was like, and it's funny because, you know, I do, you know, when I do my taxes, I'm like really detailed about all this shit. And I like conferred other people and try to figure everything out. And he, it's just one bucket that said expenses. And he was like, yeah, we would have like a, like a show at like a con. And uh, if I didn't, you know, have like enough money to like, uh, like finish it i would just like take money from there and i'm like oh cool. yeah okay that's totally fine <laughs> Charity, it's mark it's raising awareness that's what it is <laughs> it's fine yeah it was a it was a it was it was fucked up and it's funny because it's always these guys that are like the mr rogers guys of like the internet they're always the nice yeah okay. he's like super yeah. sweet and he was he was on uh, g4 for a while and yeah. um before it like burned to the ground and just all these things. He's like super nice and everybody thinks he's great and everybody loves him. And I'm like, oh, and of course he stole fucking $600,000. Hey, do you loosely stole it? But I mean, maybe he was planning on, that was his retirement. Maybe he wasn't going to mention it for 20 years and then just fucking dip out. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. He should have bought some Bitcoin with it. Yeah. that's what he, Maybe he did that with his freaking 105 grand. <laughs> How did he get caught? Huh? How did he get caught? Why would he even talk about this ever? Um, somebody, I think somebody was, they donated to it and they were wondering where their donation went or something. And somebody looked at tax filings and, oh, then they emailed, he, uh, um, they emailed the charity that like handled, oh, they emailed the charity. I've been told that's a huge felony and tortoise interference. <laughs> Yeah, but somebody emailed them directly and the the charity that handles the money was like, "Yeah, we haven't decided who we're going to give it to yet. We are t- we're open to suggestions." And it's like, "Why the fuck do I have to tell you where to don't No, you do it. You're the ones that you're the charity. You do the donating or you do the giving the money. I already gave my money. You give it to people now." And it's like, oh, "We haven't decided if you want to tell us who to donate it to." And I'm like, "This is very poorly ran." Um it was apparently ran by his brother or something. I don't fucking know. So oh, perfect. Yeah, he's fucked. Um, we'll see what happens. Uh, speaking of being fucked, Matt him so says, "Let's get a fat roast from Dick. Just go ham on the fats for a period of time. Then that can be clipped." <laughs> but Rag, it's the shame on the shame of inflated people. Ah, oh, Nick's pretty good at it though. He's yeah, Nick, that's kind of Nick's thing. He's like uh, Nick's getting a little tubby though. Have you seen him? Yeah, he's like, like a, nose, I thought his nose was getting bigger, but I think he, he's <laughs> that's where he's, he's that's, at all. It's his fat deposits in his nose. It's weird. Like a camel. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's where he keeps all of his energy is in his <laughs> nose. No, he's real small now. Uh, the first time I ever met Nick, he was kind of like, I guess, average. I don't know. Probably like 200 pounds. He's like yeah. 6'2". Now he's like 160. I'm like, fuck, he's bro. wasting away. He's just wasting. He needs to start. He needs to start lifting on stream. That's what I told him. I was like, dude, you need to start lifting like every day. Just go ham, bro. Yeah, super chats for just one arm though, like his gavel. <laughs> I just get one giant arm. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> then you can always make the joke because this is the one I masturbate with. <laughs> it's like that bodybuilder that broke his arm, and he uh, had a cast arm for a couple months or whatever, and then he got yeah. it removed, and he had one skinny ass arm and one jacked arm. It's like the weirdest yeah. thing. Um, when I I. Broke this tendon, you know. Uh, when I finally got that off, this this whole shoulder, pec, everything was like withered away. It was really gross, weird. <laughs> Take my strong hand. That's basically what it was. Yeah, yeah that's that's the scariest shit to me because I'll have friends be like, "Hey, do you want to go snowboarding or something?" Like in like next month, and I'm like, "No," because if I break anything, I can't work out, and I work out every day, and it's what I enjoy doing. It's like my stress relieving. And if I can't work out for a couple months, dude, I, I will eat a 12 gauge immediately. Yeah. Mm, I can't do that. That's like my shit, man. Everybody has their thing. And going to the gym is my thing. Popping in some earbuds and listen to like freaking Judas Priest and old weird shit, <laughs> old hair metal and damn Yankees. Oh, fuck. It's great. Thank you, Matt. Love you, dude. Another pink boy, 69.42. Nice. Appreciate you. That's, that gets us at uh, $19 or $18 from Naked Snake. Oh my god. Um, did you see that Disney? It's all over the shit. And it's now to be fair, it's kind of disingenuous because I think it's for a shareholder deal for Disney. But Bob Iger, the CEO of Disney, claims that to have admitted that um disingenuous forced messaging, like political or social messaging in their movies is destroying like their brand, is what he said like yesterday, I think. Which is true. I mean, I don't yeah. I, I want to watch an animated movie without being like like one of the characters being misgendered or something, and then everybody having a fucking tissy. It's weird. Um, but he said that, and everybody's like, "Yeah, yeah," you're, like they're like cheering and like, "We did it! We, you know, we we won!" And I'm like, "But if you look at the the last, I think three or four years, Bob Iger's said the exact same thing. <laughs> he keeps saying, "Yeah, we've went too far with messaging, and we need to focus on quality over quantity," and then they just keep doing the same shit." <laughs> Like, so I don't think it's going to change. It's they're in such a weird spot. Uh, well, it's like in Frozen. It's like, OK, well, you got some you got some hot lesbians in there. But like, are they going to fuck or what? Like, no. OK, then why am I watching? Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Even if they put a little tiny bit in the Internet. Explodes it. Right. Like that kiss, that lame lesbian kiss in Buzz Lightyear. Yeah. Which was. It was forced and annoying, but it was also like it was it was like the Chinese version. I thought I saw when I saw that kiss. Was, it was like pathetic. It's like, yeah. that's how you kiss your fucking lesbian wife when you get home from space. Like a little like, come on, put a get some put some heat on it. man. Yeah. When I make see a statement, what you're making, this is so sterilized what you have. Yeah, I was when I see things like that. I don't really like if it's something very really small like that. I've never cared, um, but I feel like there's there are a lot of content creators that have to fuck it. There will be like a slow news week, and they have to drill on that shit, like yeah. the kiss. And I'm like, ah, I was kind of whatever. The the new Doctor Who is way more in your face about that shit, and like make yeah. videos about that. And they have been because that shit was awful. Yeah, God, I used to really like Doctor Who when I was like in my twenties, and uh, yeah, I like the early like 2005 to 2000. 12 maybe 2012 mm. 11 2011 and i really liked a lot of that stuff and i went i watched that thing the one the other day because david Tennant was like that time period and i like that that actor and uh the entire episode he's just being like preached about he misgenders a space furby at one point yeah and there's like a condescending like black okay. lady that's a trans woman that like looks at him all snarky and she's like he did you just misgender like or assume his gender as a male and then doctors like i'm like thinking to myself the writing's weird because the doctor is all knowing and ageless and has been through every reality time and space uh this wouldn't be new to him if it was the future and how come he doesn't already know about it nor is it already happened it's and he's suddenly like oh yeah i missed and then he has to ask the furby the furby's pronouns and the furby's like my name's meep it 
Oh yeah, me yeah. And I'm like the, the Furby doesn't, and you can tell the Furby didn't care. It was actually really well how they portrayed that because the Furby wouldn't have cared. And then, but yeah. it takes the condescending like trans woman to like like correct the doctor. And then at the end, like all the women are standing around holding hands and they're like chastising the doctor for being a man and not knowing anything because he's a man. And they're like, we know everything. He just starts so. beating off. Like, <laughs> and I'm like, this yeah. is. What do you think about this, you bitches? <laughs> I got all the cum in the timeline. I got infinite cum. I'm Doctor Who. He just turns into Rick. Like nine TARDIS doors just open all around them, around them. Like fifty loads uh, just hit them. He could do that. A bunch of prisoners, uh, like Mitt Mags, whatever his name is, in Silence of the Lambs. Uh. Yeah, but it was funny because uh, at the at the very end, like everyone seems like a villain except for the Doctor, and they're all like like preaching to him and chastising him and they're supposed to be portrayed as like heroes and they yeah. just all look like villains they're like standing around and guys around them with guns and they're like You're heroes are the strongest contingent of people like in society yeah and i'm like who is this for it's bullies. really strange uh, <laughs> it's <laughs> crazy like, so disney everything they if they do remakes then everyone hates it because it's like crammed full of it's like black mermaids and shit yeah and people just, they can't sell the good movies again and then everything they make that's new, like it's hard to make good new movies because we've told the same story over and over and over again. And all the people writing it are like hate their fucking parents because they want to deal with all their childhood abuse on the screen. Because every fucking article needs you to be needs you to have been raped as a kid to get any press out of. Right. Like they don't. everything has to be every product that comes out has to have this stupid marketing story. Yeah. If you search for a recipe online, it's got to have a 10 page article before it for seo purposes about how you went to greece and thought about this spaghetti um it's just shitty everything about it's shitty everything about media landscape shitty yeah it is it's uh it's why i've i either watch indie films or i watch bollywood or korean films now like that you fucking like movie, oh that movie rrr like changed yeah my life. it was great like every fucking second of that movie, it I was, felt like, like an Indian accent. I was like, "Is this over now? Like, when the fuck is this? What act are we in?" What, yeah, just what is, what am I watching? <laughs> it was like kind of normal, but like had Bollywood aspects of it. And then at the fucking end, they're just like dudes, just like fighting people like with a sword, but the sword's a motorcycle, and he's just hitting people with a motorcycle and carrying it, yeah. and throwing it. Dudes like <laughs> punching tigers and riding them. I'm like, this is the greatest fucking shit I've ever seen. And they're like, uh, I need to speak to the supervisor for this movie, please. <laughs> and Ray Stevenson's just the angry British white guy. <laughs> it's so great. Like, God, I loved it. I thought it was awesome. Um, I just because if you if you don't take it too seriously, it was fucking it was great. And yeah. you know, every Korean film I watch is or show it's just none of that shit. Like you don't have to wait patiently for the preachy moment to come because I always like I always wait and I'm like bracing for it. Like yeah, there was uh, the. The new Batman with uh, Robert Pattinson. I went and saw it in theaters because fuck it, and because I hadn't been to theaters like a year at that point. And I was like, oh fuck, I'll go see the Batman movie. And um, it's you know kind of solid, whatever. Nothing's really happening. Yeah. And then there's a one scene where Catwoman's just standing on a balcony talking to you know Batman, Robert Pattinson, and they're just having a conversation. And then like, out of nowhere, almost like it was a reshoot, she's like, "This town is just filled with rich, privileged white men," and like. Then it just goes. It, then it goes back to like normal, and I'm like, "What just happened?" And then she like kisses him, and I'm like, "He's a rich white guy. What just happened?" It's like th this. This made no. But it was like one time in the entire movie. It was like just a, a two second thing where she just randomly. I guess that when they did the first like screening, like whoever's in charge was like, "There's not enough of that. You gotta put some dialogue yeah. in there." And I'm like, "Okay." It was weird. It's just really jarring. I mean, you could probably. I feel like you fit it into the story by doing acts versus doing words or dialogue. You could just make it apparent. Which I feel like they did with old what's Colin Farrell is what's that make, what make what apparent just like that these white dudes are in power I guess oh yeah you know, just make them evil and white looking that's all you gotta do you already did that <laughs> but you gotta say it it's so. like endlessly trying to cram women in movies is people don't want men don't want to see women in movies women don't want to see women in movies. They want to see women reacting to things like, okay, that's fine. But the men are driving a story. And even the, even the women should be written like teenage boys, even though they're being played by the Hollywood did that for, I feel like the entire run. And that's what worked. That's what audiences want to see. But as soon as you get a woman on there, who's saying and doing things that a woman would do, you're like, I, I can't, what am I, I can't be around this. I gotta, I'm not going to see, I'm not paying money for this. I have this at home. 
Yeah, they uh they always will cast a a woman in like a masculine role. Like they'll rot a male character and then just cast like a bunch of women as the, all these male characters, and it's just kind of yeah. insufferable. Because they, they gotta let the it. actors like come out and say like they gotta let David Tennant or whatever they get him on an interview and they say, oh wow, what do you think about that trans shit that happened on Doctor Who? And he's like, I think it's fucking retarded. Like that's yeah. how they get you to watch it. It's like, oh okay. Now I now I can watch it. Now the half the audience that the show obviously hates, or the eighty percent that the show obviously hates, has permission to go enjoy it because this guy, this poor man, is doing an Al Bundy routine on the press circuit about it. Yeah, that I mean that would work. It's like it's like a reverse psychology thing. It would totally work. Yeah. The only thing that sucks is he's doing the complete opposite because he has like a very young trans child somehow that's trans. They're like six or seven years old. I don't know. And I'm there like a trans like kid. And I'm like, how you been? Me? And when I was, I didn't even start thinking about like male and female shit until I was like at least 12, about to turn 13. <laughs> and I was like, oh, wait a second. I like titties. Like, I just, these are great. Love asses, you know? But somehow, he does. Kids he are trans, trans yeah. <laughs> David Tennant. Oh. Yeah. It's weird. Uh, that guy who, that guy, Joe Cristalli, who broke Vito's sign at the Netflix thing, he had a trans kid. Uh, that's why he was all pissed off. So how does that even work? How do you like at six or seven years old say uh, I can't like, answer that on YouTube? I don't think. <laughs> Pretty weird. Um, I don't know how that happens. And then people were getting canceled for saying leave children out of it. That Tim the Tapman guy and uh, the other guy. I forget. The, it was Tim Tapman defended him, I think. But uh, some guy, mean? Call of Duty streamer, was like, yeah, I just don't want children involved. And I don't really care. Like, just don't bring children into it. And it was, well, was you want us to molest them then like no we don't want you to molest them just don't do the you know don't let them swap well i got to do one or the other either we're <laughs> molesting them or we're doing the trans thing so you guys can pick yeah it's kind of spooky very very spooky um what do you have a uh, plan for the future other than Beto's uh, uh thing he's gonna definitely fail do you have any like shows planned or do you have any uh tours uh, comedy shows or anything i was thinking of doing an episode 400 um sh live show I don't know. Should I do that? It's yes. in <laughs> good. It's yes. like March. Let me see. March 3rd, I think, or 5th. I was going to float that out there and soft sell it and see what people said. Yeah, March 3rd. That's the day before my birthday. It's a big one. <laughs> yeah. That'd be a big show. Yeah. I don't know. It's going to be, it's going to have to be big and weird. I don't know what to do. Like a, some kind of a beer festival. Some yeah. kind of a beer Olympics. I've always wanted to do a beer Olympics. I don't know if I could pull one of those out of my ass in three months, though, or four months. Yeah, where would you do it at, you think? What city? <sighs> I don't know. Um, maybe Texas? Maybe down south where you are? Where was Nick's show? He did Nashville. one in Nashville, yeah. I never want to go to Nashville again. Yeah, those so. rooftop bars were awful. Um, yeah. The uh, the fat women going around twerking on bicycles that none of them that are just for show. Those yeah. group bicycles that none of them use. Yeah. Uh, and then there was a, the cut. Uh, there was a different cover band on every floor of every single bar playing the same like Atlantis Morissette shit. Yeah. And I wanted to die. <laughs> 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 it was awful. I was, I was thinking like a music city. Like good music, right? Yeah, and it was just cover bands playing '90s music like the whole time. And then they would play like "Sweet Child of Mine," of course. And I'm like, oh fuck, here we go, "Sweet Child of Mine." We're gonna play that. There's like eight eight Guns and Roses songs you could play that's like way better, and you should come play that one. So yeah, not so. there. No, no, I'm up for suggestions. Probably not LA, but uh, I like maybe Vegas. I like Vegas. I like Houston. Vegas and Houston are cool. Houston, Vegas is so expensive though. Yeah, yeah, you like that. <laughs> <laughs> I do like Vegas. It's fun. I like only if you'll throw up in bed. That's I will do that. That's happening. Every time I go to Vegas, I, I throw up at least once. And then I learn my learn my lesson for like three days and then the last day I get drunk again. <laughs> you know how when you get like just just shit face and you're like, I don't think I'm ever gonna drink again. Like when you're going through like the worst hangover of your life the next day. Yeah, I'll never yeah. drink again. And then like the right when you finally get out of it, you're like, I want to drink. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm on day seven of one of those hangovers right now. Oh my god! No, I'm actually gonna do it. I'm not gonna ever drink again. <laughs> yeah, that's or one thing about at all. That's one thing about this cut is I don't drink alcohol on cuts, so it'll be like two months with just no alcohol. Oh, it's gonna be brutal. 
That's why I always black out when I come back from my diet. I'm like, whoop, dead. <laughs> Immediately. I'm excited. Can't wait to do it again. You must favorite. be one productive motherfucker with no alcohol for two months. Yeah. It. The weird thing about this diet is it always makes me extremely structured. And then I start like wanting to do stuff. Like when I, when I started like losing weight on my diet, stepping on the scale, lot, losing weight like real fast, I was like really motivated. And I had this great idea for like this book, like this comic book or like a graphic novel. And I was like, I started just writing a synopsis that's huge. And then I was like, I, <laughs> I just kept writing it. I was at the gym and I was like really motivated. I'm just keep writing, keep writing. I got in contact with an artist that I really like. It's really, really good. And then I got in contact with the editor. I got all this shit. Like before I even got home from the gym that day. <laughs> and then I started, here's a synopsis. And then I gave them the first two chapters that night that I already wrote. And I was like, this is just why I'm so much fun. So, what happened? I was, I was still in the works. We're still doing everything. Oh, shit. Yeah. Still working is it on it. Amazon thing? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is? Oh, yeah. shit. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I don't know when it's going to happen. I know it's going to fucking bomb, but it'll be fun. It'll be a fun project. That's cool. <laughs> I'm excited just to see yeah. what happens. Uh but the art's gonna be unbelievable. So regardless of what happens, the art's gonna be cool. That's cool. It's not gonna be like traced like three D models and shit. Definitely not. I wouldn't even know what to do or how to do that. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty easy. Just download it. You know, put it in SketchUp and then go render. That's all you do. Easy. Put a hundred dollar price tag on it. And there you go. That's the culture war, baby. <laughs> um, this uh, Slaglus, he's back. Hey, I thought Slaglus left. He said, uh, Dick. Colin to Nick's show tonight. Is Nick having a show? They, he better not have no motherfucking show after not come on the show. <laughs> Ask for advice on how to headline a national comedy show. Then you don't have to worry about filling commercial auditions anymore. Here's the last one. Oh. Like, and show the Goomba. Thank you. I appreciate uh, this. Oh, yeah. What's the Goomba? Is that That's my penis. Too? So, so you show your penis? No. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> like Look that. at that big old thing. Jesus. Whoa. Oh, oh, whoa. <laughs> you know <laughs> Whoa. you know what that reminds me of fuck what was that it's some south park and maybe it's a movie yeah it's when uh when saddam hussein's sitting in bed beside satan bigger like yeah that, and he's like ah, satan he just, he just like, little dick like, ah, satan. <laughs> just kidding come on guy. <laughs> i just kidding come on guy <laughs> yeah dude that's great um no what did I, mean, I say i gotta worry about uh oh commercial auditions oh shit then you don't have to worry. Don't you? Don't try to squeeze in words for you cheap ass for twenty bucks by making a briefs out of them. Then you don't have to worry about failing commercial auditions anymore. Oh man, uh, I don't know if you can even really fail those. Uh, here's ask for advice on how to headline a national comedy show. Oh yeah, Nick headlined. Uh, did he headline Chrissy's show because she was a no show? Yes, he did. <laughs> Headline. He was on stage for like an hour and a half or so, or 30 minutes or something. And they're like, bro, you had 10 minutes. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, this is uh... a... <laughs> this is ambitious. Oh, my God. Nick um, bridged the gap between stand-up and podcast. I've never seen it done, but he did it live yeah. for everyone. I went on that... Uh, when we, we did that show in Nashville, and I walked, I didn't know what to do. So I think it was either you or Nick. It's like, somebody needs to go introduce us. And I was like, I'll just go do it. <laughs> I just did like a five-minute thing, just rambling. It was, it was great. Yeah, I had a lot of, good, a lot of fun. Um, it was a fun show. But yeah, Goomba. Uh, so uh, you know uh, Nina Infinity. Um, oh, yeah. Nina, I, I was real drunk, and she was on my show like three months ago, four months ago. And I got on paint. She, I was like, we were talking about dicks and like just fucking the whole time because I was drunk and she is totally cool. And I was like, oh, fuck, we'll just talk about fucking. And um, she was like, what's your penis look like? And I was like, let me open paint and I'll draw it for you on paint. Like, I'm just like open the window. <laughs> yeah. And I drew it and she's like, it looks like a fucking Goomba from Mario. And I was like, yeah, it makes sense. And then ever since then, the fucking Slagalus guy has been calling me Goomba for like six months at least. Just Don't every, every. <laughs> What was what was Nina expecting? What's she used to? I don't know, but it's yeah, it's, it's, it's a very small, but it has a, like a baseball head. So it's like let's oh, I oh wow, okay, I see it. I can imagine it now. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Like the opposite of that house. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> flat house. <laughs> you gotta crawl in like a demon. Yeah, the <laughs> the best part is the insert, and then they're like, oh damn, that was it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow, this is gonna be great. Oh, there's nothing else. Nope. You just get the baseball, and that's all you get. 
I slammed it in a toilet seat when I was like four, and I think that fucked it up. Made it like the end, the end big, and the rest didn't do nothing. Uh, Dude, that, no shit. I remember that's like a memory that's embroiled in me. And I was like two or three. Yeah. And I was a dumb kid. So I like go to my grandma's house. I'm at my grandma's house or whatever. And I would just like lay my tiny little lifeless penis like on the toilet bowl and pee. And the toilet seat just fucking fell on it when I was, and it just sandwiched that some bitch. You couldn't pull away because you get piss all over the grandma's rug, right? Yeah, it was pretty fucked up. Oh, no. I had to go to the hospital and shit. That's all I remember. Yeah. How bad was it? It was bleeding it everywhere. Yeah. No, it didn't chop it off. It just was bleeding. Didn't your didn't the toilet seat have like uh pat, like little spacers on it? I don't know. It's an old lady's toilet seat. It might not have. Oh, it's from like the thirties. Yeah, it had like it had the furry stupid seat. You know the furry seats has shag rug on the seat. Bro, how did they how did they shit in those? Yeah, there was. Do you know? Like, dude, I'll if I get any kind of tipsy and I go piss, like it's everywhere. There's everywhere. No, oh God, could you? Imagine? I don't know what's wrong with me, but I like I can't. I lost the ability to like gauge how hard it's gonna come out, or maybe I just drink too much water now. But I'll stand in front of the toilet and just right. I'm like, what the fuck is this, man? Yeah, I'm not, I get, I'm not standing three feet away to start pissing so something's got to give yeah if i get like to like drunk i just fucking sit down now i'm like yeah there's no way i'm even trying fuck that but i do kind of like to stand there and like laugh at myself as i like lean on the wall it's like really nostalgic yeah yeah i really like to like put my head on the wall and just laugh because i'm drunk it's for no reason i'm just laughing (laughs) i'm fucked up (laughs) <laughs> I want to see this toilet that your grandma had that was like a piano, uh, you know, closer. <laughs> thing. It was brutal, man. Popping your dick off. I might be remembering it way worse than it was because I was like three, but it seemed your pretty fucking bleeding. Bad. Yeah, is it, it that? I, my, I don't remember, but I, my mom told me it was like when I was older. Uh, She's like, "Yeah, I was bleeding, dude," and I was like, "Holy shit, that's fucking crazy." Was your grandma married to a rabbi or something? My, no, my grandma was married seven times. She was single though. Okay. Yeah, when she died, it was great. Like, she uh she died th- four years ago now, and um, we went to the hospital, and, and she like, literally in the most grandma fashion possible just fell and broke her hip. Like, yeah. damn, how do you do that? And um, she she was a very different lady. Like a lot of people don't have grandmas like I had. Uh, my grandma was she when she was seventy, she'd go to clubs and like just get, like do one night stands with fucking different dudes all the time. She's like seventy fucking like other old dudes all the time. And wow. we okay. would go over and she would watch she'd want to watch the Golden Girls with me. She'd be like, let's watch Golden Girls and she would just just smash fucking beers over and over. She's like this old lady sitting there a little thing with her little TV tray. You know how they had them? She's just yeah. fucking smashing beers and eating peppers. Just peppers, just smashing beers. Oh and she'd be wasted and go to sleep. And she would get drunk sometimes. And I'm no no shit. This is this is fucked up too. She would get drunk sometimes, and I would be I I was like six or seven, man. And I would go all I'd be on the other side of the house playing PlayStation One or Sega Genesis yeah. or something. Little playing it's probably Sega PlayStation One not yet. I was playing Sega Genesis, some Sonic, and my fucking grandma would go into the cellar and turn the breaker off, all the power off, and then Why? she would. I, <laughs> you better find out. She turned the breaker off and just like closed the cellar door and start screaming and say, and it's like begging for help, like and asking for me to help her. She'd be like, just, and you know, like shrill blood curdle scream. <laughs> and I would be like walking through this pitch black house, just sobbing, like grandma, just fucking, just sobbing. And she would wait till I got to the cellar door and I would open the cellar door. And it's this old spooky fucking door, right? Of course. And I, I'd open it and I'd open it. And as soon as the doorknob, I turned it, she'd go silent. <laughs> and I would open the door and she would just run out screaming and grab me. And I would like, I don't know if I was, if I was like 30 or older, I would have died of a heart attack. Uh, and I'd be crying, right? I'd be, just, I would be losing my shit. And then she turned the breaker on and be like, it's okay, baby. Let me make you macaroni and cheese. And then she'd make me mac and cheese and it'd be fine. Um, but she did that shit all the time. And then she'd like sit me down and like, light candles in the middle of the room and tell me like ghost stories and say like talk about how the, this house was used for like a bunch of killings and there's ghosts in the what house the 
fuck wow dude, she was fucked up <laughs> she was a crazy grandma dude when you um, went to her funeral were you afraid that it was like a prank <laughs> <laughs> no um she didn't have a funeral that that was so that was the yeah that was the original point but then i fucking rant because that's what i do but she when she died um she broke her hip and she was in the hospital and she signed a dnr she was like i don't want to if i fucking die you let me die i don't want to be here she would literally be like i don't i, I want to die like I'm old, life sucks. And I'm like, okay. And um, she, uh, I went and saw her and she couldn't even talk, but she could like look at you and stare daggers at you, which was kind of spooky. And um, yeah, she was, she said she didn't want to be resuscitated because my cousin lived in her house and she got, she still had like three living ex-husbands that would send her money like every month. So oh, she wow, would, okay. she didn't want anybody knowing she died. So they, they would keep sending money to my cousin that lived there. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so we never had a funeral. That's a great yeah. scam. Yeah, she was she was fucking crazy. Money. Yeah, <laughs> she was she was wild. I, I I liked her a lot. She's mean yeah. as snake though. Like she yeah. was she was nice to the grandchildren, which was me. She was super nice, it's, except for the scary shit she'd do. Yeah, um, I was gonna say. Um, but my my mom would like tell me stories about how when she was growing up, and apparently she was like a militant psycho mom would like beat the fuck out of him all the time. I'm like, damn, I can't even imagine. <laughs> But when she got really old and sick, she had a bunch of strokes like right there at the end, and I would go see her, and she would like fly off the fucking handle and start screaming and shit. So I could I could see it. Yeah. <laughs> Did could your mom it. get in any good hits when she was after her stroke when she couldn't fight back? <laughs> yeah, my mom's um, a tiny little fucking like goblin of a lady. She's so yeah. little. Um, and I remember when I found out that she was in the hospital. We went to the hospital. I met up with my parents. And of course, my mom's still sad. My mom would take her out to lunch every fucking other day. And she's like mean to my mom the whole time. And it's hilarious. I, Cause I saw her being mean to my mom uh, when I was growing up. And I thought it was funny. Um, but yeah, so she, um, fi we find out she's sick. We go to the hospital, we see her. And then, then like the next day she dies. And I'm just standing beside my mom. And she gets off the phone and learns that she had died before we got to the hospital or something. And she like stoically just put the phone down. She's like, yep, the wicked bitch is dead. And I'm like, damn. <laughs> Damn, mom! But then she cried, so it was fine. Uh, <laughs> then I was like, oh, okay, it's fine. Never mind. It's crazy, man. Crazy. I had a crazy childhood, and then I had another grandma that was, of course, sweet and normal. So no fake hauntings. No fake hauntings. No, she was just a a chronic smoker. That was pretty much her whole deal, and she didn't die of that either. She died of like malpractice, but like my family wouldn't sue her because they're weird. Should have sued. They should have sued the hospital, but they didn't. Oh yeah. yeah! If somebody wrote into my show that that happened too, they're yeah. like, "Well, you know, they're trying their best. We don't want to sue them." I'm like, what? It's just insurance companies. You got to, of course, you sue. You got to sue. It's free money. Yeah, the doctor wouldn't have fucking cared. Like, basically, they he uh, recommended her gallbladder get removed, which she didn't need it to be removed, so that wasn't even the issue. And then he, during surgery, he nicked like a intestine. She died of sepsis. So yeah. they were. They started the process to sue and then fucking like came to a family decision to not do it. And I'm like, bro, look, I'm you do realize I'm on the receiving end of a little, of a little bit of this too. Okay. Yeah. I'm like, why didn't you do it? What the fuck? Yeah. Please, please, God. I could get like a, a, a couple, like a, maybe a Lamborghini in like a couple of years. I don't know. Like, when they die, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to find a way to get my Lamborghini, man. Come on. Nope. All these things keep happening. They never do anything about it bastards you don't see a lot of old smokers anymore I used to see them all the time but I, I don't it's been a while since i've seen an old you know hacking up a lung smoker maybe it's just california i think they've a lot of them have actually quit i, I, I there's a few older people that i knew that used to smoke and they don't smoke anymore you only see like edgy teens smoking now or early 20s yeah people smoking yeah and if you're not you're you just vape <laughs> i guess it's too bad i miss them I miss those crusty old bastards hanging out in McDonald's in the alleyway in the the smoking section of McDonald's. Did you ever were you around for those? Oh yeah, I remember smoking yeah. sections everywhere. God, those were great. The non-smoking when you get shitty hotel rooms. So like I race in like a like an oval car, like NASCAR style series, and I get a hotel. I get a hotel every other weekend, uh, paid for by my team or whatever. And it's always these fucked up fucking hotels because it's like they're in like weird ass rural places, right? Yeah. And it's like the days in and it's just the whole place is stained, destroyed, fucking roaches. 
you go and they're like oh, you want a non-smoking room i'm like what do you mean how is there still like smoking rooms bro Fucking you crazy. mean i could get a room and smoke like all day in it yeah give me that one <laughs> i don't really want to but i want to be able to to do it just once in a hotel room yeah i mean you can't i mean fuck you probably good no one would care you go smoke in your uh vegas suite I mean, who's gonna give a fuck that's so the best know. part about vegas this walking around smoking inside but they're yep. kind of cracking down on it which is annoying yeah i remember when covid was going on i go to vegas every year no matter what i'm just like oh, well it's it's i gotta go to vegas um and uh i remember when covid was happening like no one wore masks. It, you you go most places in the u.s in alabama no one wore a mask at all like uh, at, no one cared nothing really closed um if you went into walmart the walmart staff would want you to wear a mask that's about it and i didn't go to walmart so fuck it um but when I went to Vegas, they would make you wear a mask as you walked into the door, and then you could just literally take it off for four seconds later, and no one had a mask on in any of the resorts at all. <laughs> it yeah. was really strange. I'm like, why do I have to wear it to walk in? It's weird. Who cares? That yeah, was that weird. was... Uh, the dealers turned into such fucking assholes during COVID in Vegas. Um, or maybe it was just where I went. It was always... It, it was a dealer told me that I had to, she kept yelling at me to put my mask on and I was smoking a cigarette when I was smoking a cigarette and she's like, put your mask on. I'm like, while I'm po smoking the fucking cigarette, you want me to put the mask on between things? She's like, yeah, yeah. Between I'm like, this is, I don't even want to give my money away now. This is totally ruined by because the dealers are every dealer I've ever dealt with is such a fucking jerk. It was like yeah. giving them carte blanche to just act like little tyrants. Yeah. It reminded me of when you would go into a restaurant and, uh, they would be like, wear a mask until you sit down at your table. I'm like, this does none. Of, this seems like I'm just following a rule, arbitrary rules for no reason <laughs> at this point. Yeah, they no. put little arrows on the ground. Stand at this arrow. <laughs> they don't want you to breathe on this guy. That was a weird. It was a very strange time that like almost felt like a dream. <laughs> it didn't really happen in Alabama, but it happened in. I, I traveled a lot, and there you go to the weird. There just people fucking weird shit. There's still like one or two people though that walk around and they just have masks on, which is fine. Fuck it. Yeah. Uh, I hope they su suffocate in those masks somehow. <laughs> Some kind of freak accident. It's always it a small like a dream. I'm it, pretty sure I died right the day before. I went to Japan before COVID broke out, and I'm pretty sure that plane crashed, and I died <laughs> and went to hell and have been there for a, a couple years now. Uh, how, how was Japan? I, I've been wanting. I want to go to Japan this year, and I have no idea. I used to have a friend that lived there, but now she doesn't live there. So I'm like, well, I don't know what to fucking do now. Yeah, it's the best. It's like just the best. Everything about it is better than everywhere else I've ever been. Um, the people are just like, there's just not some asshole. They're not a bunch of fat assholes ruining everything. Yeah. It's just like normal people. They're not a bunch of fat assholes screaming for attention. Like uh, I feel like everywhere else in the world is filled with. Yeah, they're just nice and normal. Um, it's great. beautiful, clean. The bars are weird. The bars are all like shipping containers that can only fit like six or eight people. So you go into this, uh, you, you know, antique stores. Yeah, they all have their little booths all around the store. All of their drinking is like that, where you go into these little storage containers that they've decorated like a, like a dorm party, like a, um, they've themed it like an old west storage container. And the little Japanese girl will be wearing a vest and a cowboy hat and serve you cowboy That's drinks awesome. all night. It's fucking think, great. Do you think it has anything to do with the fact that uh, their entire country is like 99.8% the exact same native people? Uh, yeah. That like, that like attests to their culture being so sought after and strong. I feel like it does. Yeah. And um, there's not like random violence and they like help, help each other out. Yeah. Yeah, it's like it's it's funny to me because you'll see people that are they idolize like Japanese culture, but then they also hold like weird political opinions that would have never allowed that culture to continue. Yeah. Like we need open borders. And I'm not necessarily against nor for. I don't really follow any of it. Um I just don't I want I want my property taxes to be lower or all taxes actually. <laughs> to be fair. Um but People will be like, we we need open borders and we need all these things. And it's like, but I also love Japan and Japan's great. And I'm like, Japan would not exist how it is if you like believed all these same things and wanted Japan to adhere to them. Um, yeah. That's how you keep a culture just the same, you know? Um, we just need a moat. Like they have that big, beautiful moat around their whole 
thing. Yeah, you know, you need to take moats around all the states to separate them. So it's at least it's at least you can slow down. You know. But we need to have we need to, we need to choose which states have this certain like have have which people though, right? <laughs> yeah, like where where are will black people? What state are black people going to be in from now on? Like Vermont, that would be fun. How are we gonna? How are all we gonna in, all there? All in Vermont. You got to go to Vermont now. <laughs> be great. All Vermont, everybody get on Doing the bus. reparations in Vermont, so <laughs> you got to be there uh, in a couple of weeks. You got to get over there. You would just see people walking, dude. If you announce like if you move to Vermont right now, like and you get like, you get fourteen million dollar reparations, you would see you would just be driving down the interstate, you'd be fucking crowds of people walking. Just fuck. keep raising the number. It's like everywhere. A trillion dollars. We're giving away a trillion dollars. It's gonna be fucking crazy. You guys are gonna love it. Um yeah. the best part about Japan was I there was this bar. We were we were looking around for a bar all day, or it felt like all day, it was probably 10 minutes. Um, so I'm like, I really need a drink. And we found a bar. I said a big sign in front, no foreigners. And I'm like, that's awesome. God bless you. God bless you, wonderful people. Yeah. Fuck me. I'm going to keep yeah. walking. I literally, uh, I literally said this the fucking probably two streams ago. There was a video or an audio clip of this like white lady. I think it was a white lady. She was visiting Japan and she called the police because they wouldn't let her into a native only club, like Japanese only club. Yeah. He called the police and the police showed up and they're like, She's like, this is racist. And the police were like, it says Japanese only. It's not racist. It just says Japanese only on it. And they couldn't even fathom what she meant. She's like, no, it's racist. And he's like, they're like, no, it's Japanese only. It says on the door, you can't go in. You're not Japanese. And she, they they like, what do you mean? It's it was the greatest shit I've ever seen in my life. It, imagine being a white lady in like a country like that. You're like, God, it must be so hard. <laughs> God, white women. That's, that's the real problem. We got to find a country for white ladies. Maybe when Israel wipes out uh, all the Palestinians, we can send all the white women to Gaza or something. Keep them there. What would we call the country then? Uh, just call it a designer Kate's. brand. Yeah, Armani, Kate Spadeville, some <laughs> shitty, <laughs> shitty brand that they would like. Just You're so skinny, a Stan. Oh, I want to live there. I'm so I'm so, I'm skinnier than I should be. Yeah, get over there, you fat bitch. <laughs> have to reinforce it because of all of the Hamas's tunnels. It'll bust through the floor, but I think we could do it. Yeah, that'd be great. Oh, you, this says this is the biggest problem in the universe, which is your show. Oh yeah, which is it's much less than Nick uh, at, at two dollars. Uh, says Carl Jones. <laughs> Don't even read it. <laughs> fuck. Oh, Carl Jobs is gonna be on the biggest problem this Friday, huh? Yeah, he's the guy that busted the yeah charity fraud thing. Yeah, he's yeah. calling into our show on Friday. That's awesome. Shit. Yeah. Hell yeah. He's gonna be on Nick's show biggest too. Problem that show. Sorry, our biggest problem on YouTube. That's where yeah. you can go to hear our show on Friday. Yeah, that's gonna be great. I need to reach out to Carl. I like I watch every fucking video he puts out. I loved him talk fucking Billy Mitchell, the arcade dude. God, I love him just tearing that dude apart. Fucking do with the mullet or Friday. Yeah, dude. Mm, I'll be watching. What would you that. ask him if you were interviewing him? Oh shit, I don't know. I'd, I'd just I would ask him everything about Billy Mitchell and the lawsuits and Billy Mitchell trying to sue him and all that. Because Billy Mitchell is just like a pile of shit, and I just it's like a train wreck. I can't stop watching. Yeah, it's just Billy Mitchell and his weird mullet. And they, they he's they've made Billy Mitchell characters on so many TV shows. Like there's this cartoon I used to watch called Regular Show, and I've always really liked it. And there was a Billy Mitchell character on the regular show. And uh, I don't even remember his name, uh, but he looked like Billy Mitchell. And he had all the high scores in all the games. And he would he was just a giant head with a fucking mullet. And it was great. Uh, what was his name? Somebody in chat will bring up the character's name I, in two seconds. I don't remember his name, but it's something. It's Billy Mitchell tried to sue that cartoon, like Cartoon Network for it as well. Oh, really? Garrett That's Bobby Ferguson. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'm Gary Bob at first. God, what a great show. It's fucking awesome. Yeah, he tried to sue them too. He's trying to sue everybody. I think he's just like a professional sewer. Huh. Maybe we should try to get sued. Yeah, he's a bitch. I hate him. He's a cheater. Sue me. Yeah. <laughs> That's all it would take. He would... What an asshole. Cheating yeah. at video games. That fucking sucks. Yeah, who does that? Who cheats at Donkey Kong on an arcade? Yeah. Who cares? <laughs> like, I got the high score on Donkey Kong's. Oh shit! Wow, you're doing great. That's great, man. Thanks. Um, somebody said on my locals, I signed up for a year to ask Dick about going to Thailand. Thailand? You oh, want yeah. me to? 
Do you want to go to Thailand? That guy wants to go to Thailand? He says, ask Nick about going to Thailand. Yes. <laughs> uh, seems great. Be a great place to go. As long as you uh, don't leave, like, the city, maybe. It's like, is yeah, it like- don't leave the city. Seems cheap. Weather's nice. You can fuck uh, 12-year-olds, I heard. That's also <laughs> a huge benefit, right? <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> is that what you wanted to hear? That's what he wanted to hear. No, I don't know. It seems nice. I saw a documentary about that shit. It was like this guy, this executive got arrested coming back into the U.S. because he would just... A documentary? Go yeah. <laughs> it was something like that. And it it was... Uh, he went to, like, Malaysia. He'd go to Malaysia all the time to, like, ho- like have sex with, like, children legally. And then he finally got arrested, obviously. Yeah. Because it's still illegal in the U.S. Like, he's still doing it, I guess. Weird. I feel like they just like, well, I mean, you're getting arrested no matter what. We're not. <laughs> yeah, you just kill them. We're gonna make know. an exception for you on this one, buddy. Yeah, I feel like uh like if you do stuff like that, just kill them. Just fucking kill yeah. them. Just kill them immediately. If like the I've said this for a long time, but if there's like video, if there's irrefutable video evidence or something like that of somebody abusing like a child. Like in that way, yeah. Just they should get like, as soon as they play it. Like, oh, you're guilty. Like the bailiff comes over and blows their head off with a, like a revolver. Ah, this AI though, man. How can you no, have that's true? You that, can't have video shit anymore. It's it, it, that is true. It's starting to change. It's kind of getting spooky. It's like now you, it's fucking terrifying. Oh man, you got to find a way to de-age someone like an undercover cop so they could be a little kid and then seduce them and then they're allowed to you know defend themselves. Yeah. Otherwise. There's no way you can't have a, you can't train a kid to do that because that would be traumatizing, right? Yeah, you can't f- fake it. You got to have undercover, uh, pedo cop squad that get de-aged. This would be a great comic. This is, should be my comic. There you go. This what is would you call it? Though? Uh, I would call it. I, the reader in this co- of this comic, am a pedophile. <laughs> 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 Ten out of ten. Somebody like reviews it. It's great. It's the greatest thing I've ever read. <laughs> yeah, it would show a kid like, oh, right, a guy is approaching on top of them. That's, <laughs> that's to get you. That's to get you in the door. And then you open it and they're like, oh, that kid on the cover is a de-aged cop who's undercover as a kid, luring pedophiles. Right? Yeah, that's cool. Actually, that's based. No, it. That, oh, you know what that reminds me of. It reminds me of the the conversation around Lollycon, like anime. Where there, it's yeah. like a, it's obviously like an eight year old girl, but it's like, oh no, she's three thousand years old and she's a demon, and I'm like, oh fuck <laughs> off. All right, so are you fucking a lot of demons then? What, what are you doing? Like, it, oh, so you're telling me you're attracted to three thousand year old demons that look like child? Yeah, you're attracted to the demon part, really? No, I'm really, I think it's really sexy that she's three thousand years old. That's what I really like. It's yeah. not that, that she looks like a child. <laughs> it has nothing to do with that at all. <laughs> Oh, uh, I, I, there was I. I got in a fight with somebody on, and I say fight, but it was like an argument on Twitter before I got banned from Twitter about that, where I was like, you know, like Lollycon is is it it's 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 basically just child porn. It's that's what it is. And these people were dude, they are so passionate about defending it. They're like they're like, no, it is not, bro. Lollycon is not that. It's not at all. And I'm like, okay, well, you just told on yourself. You definitely love this shit, um, but. <laughs> It's like whatever, like, you know, that's fine. Yeah. It's not illegal, I guess. You know, just give it. A, you can crank some fucking stomach pancakes to it if you want, but Jesus, don't talk about it or don't defend I, it. I love that the uh, the big war online, like what we're our generation, what we're dedicating all our resources to, of all the problems, is uh, is the edge cases of what is or isn't child porn. Like we've got everything is just horrible. Everybody pretty much mostly agrees on what is child is or isn't yeah. child porn. It's like, well, we haven't figured out, you know, this tiny edge case here. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, try to kill each other and ruin each other's lives over this. What about like mortgage rates? Are like eight percent? You guys, that, 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 that. we'll get to that. We've got to address this edge case of child porn first. Uh, then we can move on to the rest. That's like the that's like the entire government. <laughs> yeah, it's like I'm like, hey man, um, I pay a lot of taxes. Um, can we like a, either a uh, abolish the IRS or b like I don't pay property taxes? Like, can we like figure this out? And they're like, no, we have to talk about trans issues. And I'm like, motherfucker, yeah. I don't care. Holy shit, please. Yeah, well, we got you. there's a lot going on in uh, the Middle East. I don't give a fuck about what's going on in the Middle East. It doesn't affect me at all. Well, I'm afraid it does. 
I'm afraid uh, it, uh, we're dealing with that first. Once we figure out the Middle East and who's terrorizing who, uh, then we'll go. Then we'll get back to all this tax stuff you're always talking about. Yeah, it's they're they're like, well, this is this uh this actually is important because as as a country, we have to police and make sure people like are saved and we're, we we're we're making sure no innocents are killed anywhere in the world. And I'm like, all right, look, I don't. Uh, that's fine. I don't want to. I don't want to pay for that. And I would rather just pay less taxes. Actually, if you're, if you're okay with that, <laughs> like, can you guys figure out a, a different way to do this? Or maybe we just don't have to police the world anymore. Like, so you're saying you don't think that uh, we should have a big gay parade going down Hamas Boulevard in Gaza? What are you a homophobe? Why would you? What are you insane? We're gonna have to cancel the gay parade in Hamas Boulevard? That's crazy. They uh, definitely need to do that and then film it because I want to watch what happens. Is this weird TikTok trend where all these like pink haired, like just flamboyant, like flaming people are like, I read the Quran and I really like it. And I want to take a trip to the Middle East. And I'm like, oh, bro, please go there. And just, hey, I'm one of y'all. And they're gonna be like, oh, and they're gonna throw you off a fucking building immediately. (laughs) Face first. You're fucked. I thought you guys were cool. No, bro. What do you know? They don't don't want you. What are you doing? What if he strips down naked and they can't touch him? (laughs) No, that'd be be the king of. He could be the king of Gaza, just a naked gay guy. Yeah, they'd probably take him out with like a oh, waffle. Yeah. <laughs> probably a good plan, you know, good plan in theory. Yeah. Um, Xander says, Mr. Masterson, how do you feel about you being Andrew Tate hero? What does that mean? I don't know. How you feel about you. Man, you're gonna have to put up more money to ask this question. You <laughs> you guys are you're fucking cheaping out. And you're making us decipher your gibberish. How you feel about you being Andrew Tate hero? I'm Andrew Tate's hero. Like he stole all his, all his good lines from me when he's not talking about. Dude, that guy has problems. That guy has like internalized some major uh, child abuse. Yeah, and turned it into like life lessons. Um, and credited them for uh human trafficking success um he's he's a fucking weird guy i i hope he goes to jail because i don't want kids thinking this is correct um but they'll probably just like it even more after when he does go to jail well be like nelson mandela for incels when you <laughs> when it comes to well it, it that that is the the funniest shit about all these manosphere things is <laughs> it's they're like the, the manosphere basically they they will say oh there's a tiny subset of men that are capable of sleeping with all these women and they are speaking towards that group or about that group like these men want this woman this woman submissive 21 years old blah, blah, no bodies all that bullshit whatever and then yeah. like a guy that's like 400 pounds with a neck beard is like 34 and a virgin's watching that and he's like yeah yeah i uh I agree. I don't want a girl in any bodies either. And she has to be 22 and hot. And I'm like, no, they're not talking about you, dude. They're talking about other, like celebrities and like basketball players. You're not in this equation, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. It's like they're, they're like, they're just, it's the, the man whores and the whores are fucking each other. That's what's happening. It's a bunch of all the guys who fuck all the girls and all the girls who fuck all the guys, they fuck each other and they fuck all types of each other. And then everybody normal is like, just doesn't engage in that behavior. There's no, there's, it's not, they, it's, it isn't a weird system they've figured out. They're just all deranged in the same way. And they have been since the beginning of fucking time. Yeah. Um, they're like trying to gaslight each other into thinking that they have a choice in this, uh, in this philandery, but they don't, they're just going to compulsively sleep with each other. Yeah. So they're like infecting all of us with this weird game they have where the guys are like, Oh yeah, you can't fuck any of these, all, all these other guys. I know you're going to fuck and I'll still fuck you. And they're like, well, you got to have a million dollars a year, even though if you're totally broke, I'd fuck you. Cause I'm fucking dumb. Uh, and we are all suffering for it. Yep. hundred percent. Uh, it's very, it's just, uh, teaching, uh, it's teaching stuff that's not helpful to like a younger generation. Like it's not helpful yeah. at all. Uh, because you know you have 13 year olds talking to girls at their class or in class it's like if you have this many bodies and blah 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 then you're not it's like bro you're 13 she has no bodies yet man what you, what you, like what are you talking about it's a, it's because you know kids are dumb as fuck and they're gonna just say whatever and watch reels and shit because that's why the streets 
<laughs> she belongs to the streets, bro. I'm like, dude, she, Jessica's 12. It's like, you know how there's always, I remember being in school and there was like the one girl that like all the other girls just, they just like set their fucking tractor beam on and they're like whore. And then forever yeah. she's like the whore. Like, yeah, yeah dude, she sucks everyone's cock. And I'm, and she, you know, like she's in the corner not talking. She didn't suck anybody's cock. They just kept on. <laughs> <laughs> God, all she does is like, what a whore, what a slut. And I'm like, it's damn. Every day, actually. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> she just uh. floats on, bro. The only time that ever worked was there was this girl in my school, and like everybody called her the like slut or whatever, all the popular girls. And they're like, yeah, she's a blowjob. And then she got kicked out of school for giving like a football player a blowjob and got caught. And I was like, well, I guess she was the blowjob girl. <laughs> you get kicked out of school for that? That's. She got expelled, and then she her dad shaved her head. And, then, and of course, she went insane after that. Like, of course, she did. The call was coming from inside the house. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty. <laughs> it was pretty yeah, uh, that young girl was very promiscuous. What did the dad do when he found out? Bad parenting. Oh, yeah. With additional bad parenting. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, the, uh, something traumatizing, like shaving a woman's head, like head. You can shave a boy's head, like, but if a girl has a really, she had like really long hair, like really nice long uh. hair. You shave your little girl's head, like for the next two years, like she's got the fucking fucked up hair for the next two years. Yeah, she's, she's got to tell everybody she meets why your head is shaved. It's like, yeah, just rape her. Like what you're doing is worse. <laughs> yeah, for real. Yeah, I'm pretty sure she uh, ended up dead, like or something. Mm -hmm. uh, it that's been a long time ago. Uh, Jay Thompson says, "Make Yellow Flash or A Z the next gym." <laughs> oh man, uh, dude, be, everybody, dude, everybody got so mad about everything. Uh, it was so weird. So weird. I know. Song. Um, but I have several friends that occupy like that spectrum, and they're fucking cool. There's they don't give a fuck about any. They're just cool with me. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't, but there were some of them. I had three people lined up that canceled on me because because of this whole bullshit. Like when it first came out, and I was I had Nick on my show all the time. Yeah, uh, and they just like or either they either a they like muted the conversation like. Or unfollow me, or B, they just said they were canceling and wouldn't say why. And I was like, well, I probably understand, but whatever. Uh, but. I'm sorry. I probably have cost, I've probably cost everyone I know friends in every sphere. Uh, every group is not fond of me. <laughs> yeah. But that's, I keep, getting, I keep coming on streams. I don't know how that is. <laughs> yeah. Well, this, the scary, the scary part about it is, is those same people that do that will, like, if something happens within their circle, they'll like, they'll swear off these other people that they work with and swear off these other people. And I've yeah. never been that kind of guy, right? If, if, yeah. you know, like, I don't like, I've, I've, I've asked Eric to come on my show. I think it'd be great to have to, like chit chat and talk about shit. I don't give a fuck. I think it's fun. Um, I talked to everybody. So, and, but, uh, that's not how everybody works. Everybody's tribal, right? It doesn't matter. But people like to that uh, occupy conservative space love to claim they're not like that, but they are, they're all like, they that. really are. Yeah, they're yeah. like, yeah, we don't cancel people. We we're not. I'm like, no motherfucker. You guys do the same shit. And do the same exact shit. Same exact stuff, without fail. Yeah, I don't really. I'm not someone that believes in people learning lessons, but I hope Eric has learned something from this at least. Um, if you make a product, if your goal is for mainstream adoption, you are going to be criticized, and you will be criticized cruelly for any reason. Um reacting to it in reacting to it in such a childish way is uh well that's what started like the whole the whole blowback against marvel and all this all this shit is uh the way the marvel actresses would call everyone sexist and racist yeah. or whatever for not liking their for criticizing their product which even if the product was good i don't think i don't think any of the i don't think any of their products are good uh save a couple but that reaction is just not um that reaction is bad for business it was bad for business for Marvel because it created this industry of of uh, hateful criticism, which is fine. I think it's funny. I like it. Um, yeah. But it's doing the same thing for Eric, too, because he's reacting in the same way, calling everyone a racist or a fake Christian. And he's trained his fans to do it, too, which is uh, a shame. Um, but whatever. Yeah, that's the rough thing about fans is <clears throat> or viewers or whatever you want to say. Like, um, if you if you kind of insinuate for them to do something, even if like maybe you wouldn't condone it, they're gonna fucking do it. People are gonna do some yeah. shit. Yeah, I've had think. people. I had a guy comment on my video yesterday or today uh, on one of my old videos about uh, my old manager because he was like threatening to like kill me at one point because I used to make videos about him being fat, like the five hundred pound guy. 
And I just talk about stories about him banging hookers in the back room and shit, all that weird stuff he used to do. And um, a guy commented on a video from like an old video like two days ago, and he was like, "Hey, if you may, if you accidentally dox like this egg guy, like you know, some of us might just go take care of him, winky face." And I'm like, "Why would I ever do that? <laughs> I don't, I don't want anybody to do nothing. To nobody. I don't like. I don't care. It's weird. I don't know yeah. that guy anymore. It's been ten years, man. Like, don't go kill him." Why? Because he's fat? Like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> like Jesus. Kill him Don't now. Don't in writing, man. What's wrong with you? Why would you? I mean, use Signal at least. Yeah. For God's sake. Yeah, yeah, for real. Like, what are you doing? Commenting publicly on the thing. Like, yeah. <laughs> at least use Signal, please. Um, Jay Thompson says, can we get uh, Cam on the biggest problem? Uh, I, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah I, go, I go on. I go I go on. I was on Eliza Schaefer's show two days ago. I go on and whatever, man. I love it going on all shows. I'll be on the it's Jack show tomorrow. Oh, you are? <laughs> yeah, I'll be on the Jack show tomorrow. Oh, cool. So, um, I try to pop in every Thursday, but I fell at it because I'll be doing something. I'm stressed out as fuck. <laughs> Can't do anything. So, do you uh, have to practice driving for your races? Yeah, it's that is the most important. It is unbelievable. Like it's so hard to express because people. You don't know until you, you, you're there. And uh, like the la the first time I ever got into a race car, first time, man, I was, uh, I had that, you know, head on my shoulders. I was like, I'm going to, I've played racing games. I've wanted to do this my whole life. I know how to drive fast. I drive cars, whatever. Fuck it. I get on that racetrack and it, you, it's, you don't, you don't understand what it takes to go fucking fast. Like you don't know what it takes. Like, You'll go and you'll be like on the track alone. And you're like, man, I'm fucking, I'm fucking blazing some ass out here. And then a 10 time champion will go out there and run four seconds quicker on a quarter mile track in yeah. the same car. And you're like, what? <laughs> so it takes a long time to understand how to go. And you also have to put everything at the wayside and drive on the edge all the time. So you're, you, you give it a little bit too much throttle coming off the corner. You're going to be sideways and you have to understand how to, counterbalance that and then also learn how to dance it and use that to your advantage and um it took me a, it took me about a year to get really up to scuff to where i could compete for like top fives and i was i finished in the top five almost every of my last like four races in a row except for the time i've wrecked of like a motherfucker it's crazy um but yeah you get you once you get it you get it and it's like riding a bike and then you you can jump in a car and you'll go fast but i see i see new people coming to the sport or new people try, they'll like go to a test day or something. It's first time ever getting the buy a car, first time ever. Yeah. And they'll go out there and people are going 170 miles an hour past them and they're going 90 and they won't go any faster. They they're break they're like breaking at a corner. You you go full throttle at, you know, like yeah. a damn AI in a bad game. And they'll get out. I saw a guy two years ago. We were running, we were testing at this big track, and I was balls to the wall. And uh probably 168 170 miles an hour down the back stretch just, just gone and we were running the fastest that day and we had a bunch of people running within about a second of me and there was a few new guys that were you know talking to everybody like this is our first time out here we're excited with with fucking high dollar machines like brand new cars built specifically for this track being there for just for, just for this test day guy get in the car go 90 miles an hour dangerous as fuck because guys are going by him like he's sitting still you yeah. know coming to the pits and the guys the guy's like, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if this is for me. He sells the car like a week later, <laughs> completely done. So yeah, it's just a, it's a thing. It's it, and you're 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 like side by side. I have this really cool example um, where we were running last year, and uh, well, no, it's still this year, I guess technically. Let me find it, and I'll, I'll so you can just kind of get an idea. Um, because uh, I started first in this or second, I guess. Everybody's dead. This is after we wrecked. I have it saved here somewhere. Oh, God, it's so loud. Jesus, I should probably mute this or something. <laughs> where is it? I don't know where it is. God, it's, is it none of these? Wait, here it is. This is probably it right here. Yeah, this is it. All right, cool. So this is a very small track, but it's a really fast track. And um, here we go. All right. Is this I'll like film day? Like you go, you go after your race and watch yourself from different angles and try to figure out what you did yeah you did yeah yeah sure um i record everything and i used to post it but then i just stopped posting it because i'm like man i'm gonna i'm gonna film all this shit i'm gonna make youtube videos out of it and when i get there it's and I, I can't i don't even think about that shit i'm like 
looking at data, sitting there, like hydrating, getting in the car, doing all these things, talking to all these people, talking to having meetings with team owners, uh, getting chewed out by the team owners or the the sport owners fucking light you up sometimes. Pretty it's pretty fun. It's like good old boy shit and like yeah. redneck stuff. And if you fuck up at all, they will light your ass up like you're a little yeah. kid. But you, so, so I mean, much money in it that they yeah, have. I, yeah. yeah, they're all gajillionaires. And the, I mean, the guy that I race for is a gajillionaire. Um, yeah. I don't drive my own cars. I used to, but um, I don't have to do that no more. Thank God. But um, this is at New River. I started second, and it's just balls to the wall the entire time. And this is my driving level now. Probably this is like two races ago. We we're at done for the year, but it's going green right here. Oh. oh. And it doesn't look like you should be able to like stick in these corners or go this fast or and it's just real stressful. You're just side by side for laps and laps and laps. Wow. Do you listen to music while you're doing this? No, I just have a guy screaming at me. That's and it's just cool. and, and you're just doing it doing this for like over a hundred laps, just sweating bullets and overshooting corners and shit. I like overshot the hell out of this corner. Guy gets on my inside, and we're just just door to door, just the whole time. Well, there's other guys out here. You were in first the whole time, or yeah, I'm in second right here. He's right there. Yeah. Oh, you get a good run off the corner. You get a real oh, good run there, cool. and then he pushes me up and fucks everything up. <laughs> just fucks everything up. Fuck you, Blair Real Estate. But yeah, it's fun. It's real fun. Real wow. stressful. Um. But that's, yeah. that's what I'm. I got. I I'm, I have a full ride next year. I got a full sponsor next year. Whole year. I'm oh excited. shit! That's I'm, awesome. Is that going to be on your car? Legalize eating ass. I hope so. Could you imagine? No, nah, th- these a lot of church going people. I don't know. <laughs> they oh feel yeah. Like, Wait a second, Cody. You can't have that idea. Um, I my my sponsor for the whole year is a uh, tool organizer. It's a uh, org- It's a tool company that for organizing tools. They have all these sets you can order and like. Make sure, like toolbox and everything, because it's for you know it's for racing guys and shit. Yeah, they're just you can make everything look so nice, just like organized, like not snap on like a competitor. Yeah, okay. and um, they uh stepped on board and have been really helpful. So it's been helping me out a lot. Plus, yeah. helps my team out a lot. And plus, Kristen McGoff McGoff helps me out with a Pink Boy Super Chat, my boy. Um, uh, somebody Carrie says, what if somebody pays for that to be on the car? Yeah, I don't think they'll uh, let it happen. Chris McGoff says, YouTube sent me down some autistic rabbit hole about Nick's wife being railed by Drex and Dick Blood being pegged. What the fuck? Oh. What is fact and what is fiction? All of it's probably fiction, but it is fun to talk about. Yeah, it's fun to, well, half of that's fun. Let's talk about the, leave the first part off. Don't talk about that. Me, the me is fine. Uh, getting pegged. Um, I don't know. I don't I'm know a little old for that, man. Uh, if you got if you guys um, you should see my girlfriend Park before you think it. I'm getting pegged. I wouldn't so. trust her. Yeah, I would. I would get like a guy to do it. Yeah, that's. I think they would be better at it. Yeah, honestly. dude. Yeah, for sure. I don't know if a want a girl like you ever seen a lady using a strap on in a porn. It's so awkward. Uh, yeah, it's not. It's it not know how to pelvic it. thrust at all. Because they're trying to get themselves on. It's like no, no, that's not how you do it. You got to punish them. It's not. Yeah. You're doing it like a like a dance thing that's not no yeah it's not that's not what i want to see uh (laughs) you're ruining this for me yes please god stop um make sure you guys like the show we're 40 away from the stretch goal i appreciate you guys and chris mcgoff is that worth it's pink but it's noak it is is 500 norwegian krogans which is worth 50 dollars us oh really oh okay well something like that yeah (laughs) you can keep asking for 50 bucks (laughs) thank you chris mcgoff appreciate you oh by the way i was doing um doing uh some lat pulls looking in the mirror yesterday and my back starting to get real cut look like a bunch of potatoes very excited to see that that's great look at his back he looks great in his profile oh 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 you think that's him that doesn't look like the back of a guy who's going down autistic rabbit holes about pegging (laughs) i don't know i don't know i've went down some weird ass rabbit holes before i got real drunk recently and i said a few few weeks ago three weeks four weeks ago i got uh i got real drunk and uh, I was like sitting at my computer. It was like 1 a.m. And I was like, I want to play Resident Evil 2. So I just like start Resident Evil 2. I'm drunk. I just had like six Woodford and Cokes. And uh, 
there's this discord and um i'm a part of and i don't know why but i'm a, I'm part of like people keep inviting me to discords so for some reason i click accept and they do a discord call like a discord wide call and it just starts ringing and i'm just sitting there playing resident Evil 2 drunk as fuck and i uh i just answer it and i just start talking to these people and it's like like everyone and now I gotta preface this with these people were awesome and fun to talk to and sweet and I had a great time. It was all it was like one of the best nights I've had in a long time. Just talking about bullshit. But they all were like they all had obviously had autism. Like all of them. And we talked about the most fucked up shit for like three hours until or until like six AM. It was like daylight. And I was just talking to these people about the most fucked up shit. <laughs> it was great, man. It was just random ass people. It was, it was cool. I enjoyed it. Loved it, man. That's my favorite. That's my favorite memories. And it was just talking about bullshit. And they all hold the same opinions. I feel like most people hold the same level-headed opinions as everybody else. To be fair, yeah, I think they so all. Too. They all said the same shit that I was saying, and I was like, huh. Even and I, two of them were trans, and they were, huh. yeah, they were completely like, please don't uh, let children be involved. That's fucked up. And I'm like, you guys are great. <laughs> I mean, you girls are great. <laughs> It's great. Yeah, but it's funnier when it's kids doing it, you know? <laughs> I mean, yeah, everybody I likes to see kids doing a version of adult things. It's it's just like Christmas pageants, you know? They're not good actors, but we like to see them act. Yeah, I liked Home Alone. It was great. Macaulay Culkin did great. Yeah. <laughs> you could have a couple kids. I mean, you don't need all of these fucking kids. How many kids are there? We could trans a couple of them. Come on. <laughs> Where's the hormones? I mean, car wrecks every year. You're not crying about lowering the speed limit, right? So let's put things in perspective here, people. We should definitely increase the speed limit, though. <laughs> God, I want to increase the speed limit. Yeah. Yeah, I want to die. I would like uh, to die, please. Because <laughs> uh, I follow it to a T. I want to go as fast as possible. Um, you see, they're trying to limit cars, like the manufacturers. They're trying to lobby the, tr uh, the trans transportation authority to make manufacturers limit cars like 100 miles an hour or something like that. Yeah, that would be pretty gay. They they limit yeah. a, a lot of cars at 155. Um, oh, they do. Yeah, my my Mustang. I used to have, you know, before I got my R8 was limited at 155. So it'd stop yeah. at 155 and just and it would cut off and just go burn and slow down to like 120, and then you could start accelerating again. My R8 doesn't have that. That bitch would go all the way to 204. Ah. It's a monster. Wow, it's a beautiful car. I love it. Um, but yeah, no, they should definitely uh. Never put limits on cars because if you're gonna go 150 miles an hour, you're already you're already kind of fucking die probably. You're gonna do something fucked up somewhere along the line. Yeah, right. So because <clears throat> it's like a it's it's you if you're gonna limit cars, like you shouldn't be able to limit cars as long as I can buy, buy an AR-15 because they're they're more fucked up. And but uh, you know, like I don't think you're gonna like where that goes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You exactly. should say that. We're gonna do that first. Like, uh... it's like, oh shit! No, I bought it. The reason I say that is because I, I bought a new AR-15 today, um, and a 12 really? gauge because I've been meaning to forever. And uh, and uh, God, I love it. It's fucking the love cool. those, love those guns. Um, yeah, I got a, a D. It's, a, it's just it's the brand is called DB. Uh, they're like they were on the sale for four ninety nine. It's a fucking great deal. Wow. And it came with a red dot fucking scope. And you get the extended mag because it's Alabama. <laughs> so the ammo is super cheap right now. I'm like, man, I'm about to go to the range and blow shit up. It's going to be awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. That really it. sucks about California, the guns. Um, but I guess I just have a bunch of extra money that I would have spent on guns that I can pay in property taxes. So that's <laughs> at least there's that. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's crazy. I watched a guy like, yeah, Diamondback. Thank you, Ash Jetta. I watched a guy. Uh, he's like reviewing the gun on YouTube. And uh, he can he only can shoot like five shots out of it, I guess because California or something. Like you can only uh, have like yeah. a five shot magazine or something. Yeah, I'm like, what's the point? I mean, if you're gonna fucking you, you could just have ten mags on you if you're gonna go to a school. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm not gonna change anything. You're probably breaking the law already if you're going to school to murder a bunch of kids. Yeah, fuck it. Like, what, you, what is that? We want to like limit the amount of kids this dude can shoot at. It's like, I mean, he's already yeah. fucking doing. He's already doing the thing. You know, I don't really. I don't think that's going to prevent. Plan a lot, like the school shooters plan a lot. You yeah. know, they, I'm sure they could go to Nevada. Yeah, I mean, they'll Nevada. just they can just get like a really like uh, one of those long ass pistols that hold like 14 rounds. There you go. Just, then now you're doing the same thing now. Okay. Yeah, 
what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Hayden, FYI, Toyota has been limiting their trucks to 109 for the last several years. My 17 Tundra and 23 Tundra both die at 109. <laughs> That's so slow. <laughs> well, my tr my truck that I had when I was in high school uh, stopped out at like eighty five. There was a or eighty five or ninety five F one fifty back then. Shit, um, my my Jeep does. My Jeep won't get to eighty eight. My yeah. Jeep will it'll shake. You'll it'll explode. That thing starts shaking. I'm like, yeah, I'm not going eighty. This son of a bitch. It's shaped like a freaking square block with four giant wheels. <laughs> yeah, I don't need to be driving faster than that, but I do need the government to not make that illegal no. yeah the government shouldn't do anything ever again yeah everything should be legal. myself and i don't want the government to make it illegal for me to do that exactly i mean that's it is weird it is is it technically illegal to kill your, kill your oh yeah yeah what are they gonna do <laughs> you're not allowed to have an open casket funeral anymore fucker it's like oh that's yeah. my family? okay well they'll arrest your doctor who let you do it they want you uh <laughs> alive and Paying for medical medical treatment, I guess. I don't they know. Want you paying taxes? It's like yeah. women women going into the workforce, like uh, like through the sixties and seventies. It's like they're like, oh, we're we're encouraging them to go into the workforce. So why why does the government really want to do this? And it's like they want talking. They want fifty percent more taxes. <laughs> yeah, bro, I do the same shit. If like I had a like a, if I had a if I was Charles Manson and had like twenty girls living at my little weird like fucking cabin place. And then I was like, go get a job and then give me your money. I'd do that. <laughs> like, buy a Ferrari in like fucking two months. Sure. More tax <laughs> care. We can tax the daycare. Tax everything. Yeah, it sucks. Hayden, I love you. Appreciate you, dude. You're the goat. You're the man. Orange boy in the house. Let me give a few shout outs before we log off here. Um, because we're hitting up three hours. And I actually didn't plan on going that long, but oh shit. Just, oh. I can talk to Dick about anything. It's crazy. Um, <laughs> I can talk to Dick about anything. Um, go back. It's you know to be fair, and this isn't this is kind of gay, but not super, not too totally gay. It's kind of gay though. Like I sometimes I have guests, and it's so hard to talk through. It's like so hard to like continue talking like through a conversation once you're <laughs> once you're through the subject matter. But yeah. when I have a guest that I can just talk about what the fuck ever for hours, like I enjoy it, and then I can I just keep going because I'm like. This never happens. <laughs> it's never happened. Yeah, I mean, well, we've hung out outside of the internet too, so I feel yeah. like it's always easier to talk to people that you've known in like meat space. Yeah, dude. Yeah, we need to do that again, fucking Vegas. But not. Right, like, I'll, do a, I'll do a 400 show then. I'll put something yeah. together. That'll be that'll be kick ass. Yeah, um, I got cucked out of my. Th I had a big 300 episode uh, live show planned, and COVID hit on on that day of the show. They uh, LA did martial law instituted martial law and made all gatherings illegal so we got cucked out of that maybe i'll do that we'll do a redo somewhere except for gavin newsom he was allowed to go party with celebrities thank god well you know he's got to blow off some steam look at look at him he's gorgeous that hair <laughs> you want him you want a leader that's partying while you're locked up that's leadership that's cool <laughs> man i'll tell you i tell you what like when i saw when i saw that that was the craziest shit when i saw like Gavin Newsom or other politicians being like, you need to do this thing. We need to care about other people. And then like a photo or a video would come out the next day of them, like yeah. fucking at a party, just drinking and fucking partying with like, like five celebrity like actors. I'm like, how do people like wow. support even kind of support this dude after this? It's crazy. It's crazy. Um, did you see what he did to uh, black people in reparations in California? Didn't he like, at the last minute, like pull it out. What happened? I forgot. Yeah, he made him. He made all black people all get together in California and figure out how much money we owe them for reparations. And he let it go for like six months. And then when they figured it out, they're like, "All right, five million bucks a black person, and like new libraries, and like a uh, fucking Martin, new season of Martin reunion, and like all this stuff." <laughs> and then he goes, uh, "You know what?" He took it. And he goes, "You know what? It's not about money. It's about respect. This isn't enough, but we're gonna get there one." one day it's like Damn. dude that's the funniest thing i've ever seen i can't believe you got away with that <laughs> i'm in now i'm an i'm a i'm a uh whatever cam head now yeah that's a big does uh, a big successful troll yeah. yeah it's weird and people like people will still support will support it even after that it's crazy shit yeah. um chris mcgoff says the gym takes up an hour five days a week I haven't had cable since 2012 don't drink there's time for a case oh. yeah same okay well 
I haven't had cable since 2010. Kristen McGough. Don't watch game. too many videos about pegging. You might stare too long into the uh, abyss. The uh, abyss. The event horizon. Thank you, Kristen McGough. I love you. Appreciate you, dude. The, the, the same. I go to the gym fucking six days a week or seven days a week right now because I, I fucking can't. I can't stop. Uh, when I when I'm cutting, like the sometimes the low carbness like gets me in a real fucking down mood, and like going yeah. to the gym makes me not feel as down. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to the gym every day. Um, Billy Hatcher, the government should never be allowed to restrict our car's speed. What's the point of having a max speed? If I own an Infinity G35 from 2006 and I went 130 in that bitch, but it's limited to that. Yeah, I agree. Uh, if you own a fucking Bugatti, you should be able to go 267. Well, man, the government can tell you how big a pipe you can have, a water pipe you can have in your house for your shower. So they're they're coming they're doing it there's no stopping it there's you basically the only thing you can hope for is the least regulation possible <laughs> and uh yeah we have the most possible right now um it just gets worse and worse my um, only hope is that there's so many mexican immigrants coming in that they eventually pull like a el salvador or a you know argentina when there's too many of them to deal with and say all right we're electing our a huge libertarian uh fascist libertarian whatever Let's yeah find, let's fix this once and for good all he has once to do is long. uh do the speech about giving him an inch and they kill you yeah that was a great that, like i watched that and uh that was a like, he, it just his like his uh presentation like his delivery like fucking like robbed me up i was like yeah fuck him yeah kill him. <laughs> <laughs> damn this dude, i don't even agree with this i'm just like yeah fuck them and his I hair know. looks retarded. It looks like he came out of a time machine. It looks like one of those hairdo machines from the 80s. Yeah. Uh, but I love it. He uh, literally looks like he stepped out of 1974. Like, yeah. He got mutton chops and everything. And he's and obviously his accent and like him being like speaking Spanish is just fucking great. Yeah. He's like rolling his R's and he's like, Garra! and just kill him. Just fucking kill him. One inch. Garra! You're like, oh, fuck. This guy's great. Don't give him an inch. Fuck him. <laughs> I love it, dude. Oh my god. All right, boys. Um, I am going to do naked snake for the 243rd time. And then we're gonna log off here. We're gonna raid Shagsworth, my boy Shag. I don't know if he's I hope he's still alive when I do this. Sometimes people get off right when I do this. I'm like, you fucking dumbass. It's gonna raid you. Um, let me make sure he's still alive before I commit because uh sometimes I fuck up. Let's see how long he's been live. 91 minutes. All right, fuck it. We're gonna raid him. All right, um, oh, everybody in the stream has I saw him shirts on. This is gonna be great. All right, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> ask them what their favorite part is. Oh, no, please, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and check out uh, my show's Dick Dot Show, patreon.com slash the Dick Show. It's every Sunday. Thanks oh, for sweet. having me on, um, give me, Shoot me a link in the private chat of that, and okay. I will post it in my chat. I'll spam the fuck out of it. Okie dokie. They can't ban me for spamming. Um, make sure you guys like the show. I'm going to do a uh, naked snake here while Dick watches awkwardly. And then we're going to end the show. It's going to be a great time. Um, I put out a video yesterday and it is blowing the hell up. Make sure you guys go check it out. Um, new GameStop video once a week. <laughs> Might as well. You guys keep fucking watching them. You dumb bitches. People in the chat. Why do you keep making GameStop videos? Well, I'm Why would I not? I, mean, I just keep watching the fuck out of them. Uh, so can't help it. I just got to do it, man. Um, all right, here we go. There it is, patreon.com forward slash the dick show. Here it is right here in the chat. Everybody go give it some love. Go give dick some love. Look up the cannonball run. Oh, bro, I know about the cannonball run. I've watched the entire history of every record held by the cannonball run. Love that shit. Thank you, Billy. Appreciate you. I love that shit. All right, boys. They can't ban me. <laughs> Famous last words. Yeah. Not me, my mods. They're bitches. They can't do nothing. Oh, yeah. They a bunch of bitches. All right, boys. 243, 242. <laughs> Man, I don't even remember. I'm gonna be honest. Why is this shit so loud all the time for me? I even turned it down. Damn, you've taken your you're taking all your clothes off 243 times. Yes. Wow, that's impressive. <laughs> yes. We uh, we never stop. We never stop. We've not missed it in over two and a half years, I think. Oh wow. These thirsty bastards just want to see me shirtless, and I can't help it. It's great. So great that Zia started doing it, and she hasn't missed it in like 27 streams. Now they that I can believe. That oh yeah, me too. That's easy to believe. <laughs> she makes more than me now. It's some bullshit. All right, uh, here we go. Let me pop my headset off. We're gonna sing the first verse, and then we're gonna get on. We're gonna get out of here. All right, two seconds. Oh,
Oh, well, now I can say whatever I want because he doesn't have his headphones on. Hi, right, boys. Oh, yeah. It's your favorite part, Carrie. Ooh. Here we go. First verse. In my time, there'd be nobody else. Ooh. Oh, Ashley, joining. Cry. It's the way I fly. 99 cents. What is this? A fast food item that mm. you're missing? Filet mignon and steak. Here we go, boys. You guys ready for your favorite part, Ashley? Here we go. Snake Peter. Here it is. Here it is. (laughs) Here they come. <laughs> there it is. Ashley, Hayden, I give my life, bitches. <laughs> Not for honor, but for you. I appreciate you guys so much. It looked like you grew a little pencil mustache when you took your shirt off. I don't know why that is. It's a it is weird. Dude, my, my my the best the best uh the best naked snake I ever had. I had a long mustache that was like twirled. Oh, nice. I can grow it. I don't know why. I can grow a really nice twirly mustache, and I love it. Thank you, Koof. Thank you for the naked snake. Thank you so much, Koof. Ashley again. Love you. Hayden. Fucking love this song, bro. We ain't done. We got one more titty jiggle coming right at your face. Thank you guys so much, Hayden. Love you. Appreciate you. Alan Jones is joining the stream. Appreciate you, Alan, for the stripper money. This is what it feels like to be a small-time stripper in a rural Alabama town. Appreciate you. They get those 51s. That's their big day. Here we go, boys. You ready? Last one of the night. Nice. Oh, Steph. What's up, baby? She jumped in last second. Thank you, baby. Appreciate you. We did it again, boys. We're uh yeah, we're that was 242. So we're eight away. That's what I said earlier. We're eight away from a 24-hour stream that I'll likely do in January. I'll have a lot of guests on. I think I'm going to get Critical Drinker on. I'll get Nick on at some point, get a lot of people on, and I'll be live for 24 hours just fucking around, and I'm not looking forward to it. So, <laughs> Man, that's cr- that sounds like hell. Uh, it sounds like fun for a couple hours, but... Uh. Yeah, last time I did it, uh, I thought I was going to die. I did it in, I think it was February of 2020, and um, I had just hit 100K subs on YouTube. So I was like, I'm going to do a 24 hour stream when I hit 100K because I was going to do a 24 hour stream when I hit 50. And it, I, I, it was like a fucking, it was snowballed out of nowhere. I went from 30 to like 50, 60, 70, 80, 94, like within like a month. And I'm like, well, I guess I'll just do it at 100K. And then I hit 100K. It it was like pulling teeth to hit that weird 100K. That last like 6,000 was brutal. It's really strange. That must be nice to have a channel. That's great. Congratulations on all your success. But we'll see how long it lasts. I've been banned everywhere else. I got banned on Instagram. They brought me back though after a little while because they banned me for literally no reason, and yeah. it was just it just so happens it happened the same day I got banned on Twitter, um, for no reason. I'm telling Again. you, man, they got some they got some moles in there, some big ones. Some big That's what I was people. saying. They got people working in there that are like activists still, and they're oh. they're they because even if I appeal it, it gets it gets rejected within a couple seconds every time. Mm-hmm. So there's no one looking at these appeals. They have some note or some trigger on my account. It's like auto reject always. Over my mine got appealed, and then when the by the Indians, and then when America woke back up, I got re banned by one of them. I was like, oh okay, I got it. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, you came back for like a second at one point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Thank you, Rene, Puerto Rico. Appreciate you, buddy. <clears throat> Renee Galarza, love you. Make sure you like the stream. We're 25 blocks away from the stretch goal. We already killed the goal, but 25 blocks away from the stretch goal. We're going to raid uh, Shagsworth, everybody. Uh, give him some love in the chat. Um, thank you, Rene Galarza. Oh, Renegade Guardian says to uh, uh, CAD, which is like 99 cents USD to piss off Master. Oh, thank you. Cheap asshole. These fuckers. Thank you. Oh, man. 
Appreciate you. Now, it reminds me of that girl. It's like, if you don't have five dollars, then what are you doing with your life? I wouldn't That's even awesome. pick that up off the ground. Two Canadian dollars. Jesus, come <laughs> on, man. It's Christmas. Dig deep. Dig, Dig deep. deep. Come on. Jesus. I'm going to stream on Christmas Day to make up for this. Jesus, God. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys. Happy Hanukkah, whatever, Renee. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us today. Thank you, Dick, for coming on. It's fun. I was looking forward to this one for a long time. Yeah, um, me too. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, dude, it's been awesome. So make sure you guys follow a dick over on uh, patreon.com forward slash the dick show. It's in the chat right now. I'm spamming it. Um, and you can't delete it because I, I am the leader. I appreciate you guys so much. We'll see you over on Shaggy Horse show. Um, give him some love <clears throat> and uh, have a good time. It's going to be really, really great. I appreciate you guys so much. Um, and I appreciate you, Dick. Thank you, Dan. Thanks, buddy. See you. All right. See you guys. We'll see you on Shags. <laughs>